at the end of time. O'clock. Hey, everybody. What's going on? That's a good intro. It's Wednesday. I, I, it's I like how it turned out, if I yeah. do say so myself. It's got like <laughs> high impact. <laughs> coming at you. Spinning at you. Coming at you. It's coming at you. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit, man. It's going, oh, it's shit. going down, man. It's going down. I like it. <laughs> Today is Wednesday. This is the main show. And we got a we got another UFO case, which well you, UFO ish UFO ish well, you guys know alien ish. You know how I am with with these cases. I like them, and I don't know this case, so it's the first time I'm hearing of it. So you know what I mean. I got to stay sober. If I get too drunk, then I'd be like, what? But that, you know what it is. <laughs> it's more interesting. What? <laughs> it's, it's more interesting. It's more interesting for me a lot of times when I've never heard of the case, because you know if I already know the case, then I'm sitting here just waiting to get through it, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I, it's, it's like watching a movie you've already seen before, you know, it's like that. But uh, now I can be kind of like part of the audience and just listen and go, oh yeah, you know. But I don't know this one. I don't know this one at all. What's this What's this about, Jay? It's kind of like, yeah, Tom Sykes says, uh, another Skinwalker Ranch case, but better. Yeah, this one is kind of like, I feel like it's not as well known as Skinwalker Ranch, but it's kind of like on a similar wavelength where... Yeah, there's alien and UFO activity, but there's, oh, so much more. Yeah. Where is this? <laughs> Arizona. Arizona. So it's Arizona. Down, down the southwest where all the crazies fucking live. Yeah. And all the crazy desert people. Because Skinwalker yeah. Ranch is in Utah. Yeah. I think. I think, was it? Okay. Yeah. All right, so this should be good. <laughs> this should be good. Who's in Who's in the chat? Um, Everybody. Okay. Yeah, a couple of people said, uh, yeah, sick intro. Uh, Grimter's Hammer said, whoa, that intro is totally dope. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is only the second time we've used it, right? Because yeah, I G think the I think we just uh, started it on the New Year. Yeah, Jenny's bringing it, man. When she first showed it to me after she made it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's fucking awesome. I said, you knocked it out of the park, Jen. Don't change a fucking thing. And she got a big smile on her face. He's like, yeah, yeah, I said, do not change a fucking thing. Well, I knew it was good when I Yeah, did. yeah. I didn't need, you know what I, mean? I said didn't even say well you should maybe change this or that you know sometimes that happens or like I don't really like the I don't really like the logo I like the logo I like everything which is unusual cuz you usually yeah, I like everything on it you don't usually like it something you always complain. Well I usually don't like the very first uh, tries you know maybe I mean? you got it down to science now cuz we already done logos for for the show. Well, and I've done like a million different ones yeah. too, like a million different variations over the years. Yeah, of that, so, of that one, right? Well, I mean, just of different ones, like experimenting with different things. Well, I was so. talking about thirteen o'clock logos. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, okay. I've experimented with different ones. Yeah, because I was actually throwing around the idea of changing the logo like a couple of years ago, and right. I did like a bunch of variations, but I didn't really love any of them, so we just like kind of kept the one we had, but. You know what I mean? Oh, the new one you have now, I fucking think it just knocks it out of the park. That's gonna be yeah. Great I, like I said, I like how it came out. Well, and, well, and once we started uh, screen printing our own shirts, yeah. um, you know that kind of made me think. Well, I'm I want something that's really like easy to screen print. It'll be easy to screen print. Nothing real fine. No little fine yeah. lines. Because we weren't work. really thinking about that when right. we did the first logo. So we, we, I mean, we weren't really worried about it. They have to be pretty bold and kind of geometric and easy to see. They can't. They can't be overly complex or, or the the screen printing. It, it, too much. There's too much tr um, possibility for error when you're yeah. making the screen. And then after this, even if the screen gets made, shooting it to make a ch to make a uh, a picture, the more complicated that is, the the, the greater chances of fucking that shirt up. It's, it's easier when it's real simple. Yeah. But, but it has to be simple, but it has to catch your eye and it has to look cool. And I, I think you I think you knocked out of the park. And I'm hoping that neon green dye will pop like that on a black shirt. I hope so too. Like without yeah. having to without do having to do a white first. a white under yeah layer. I know. Which um, I could break down and get it, get the two color the two color machine to hold the shirt to do the two colors but I have to have room to assemble it so which yeah. I guess it's some on shirt day I'd have to assemble it in the uh, living room yeah and what if I only wanted to make one shirt 
for yeah, two. Yeah. It'd be kind of a pain. And then it's a pain. You got to, you know, it takes forever to set that up. But I got that foldable ta table down in the garage that I got to bring up. We can work on that. And maybe I'll look at a two or a three color. Or maybe they have four color. Let's see what the price differences are. You know? Yeah. It's a rotational thing. It holds a shirt and it holds everything. Everything has to be aligned and you got to align it. Well, up yeah. I mean, plates. it's just like, it's, it's, you know, it's the same as it used to be back in the old days yeah. with uh, paper printing. Like any kind of CMYK printing, mm -hmm. you always have to like line everything up. Otherwise, yeah. you get that kind of like, yeah. it doesn't line up right and it looks funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Tom Sykes says, supposedly John Edmonds uh, is friends with director Kevin Smith or worked with him or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Um, I didn't realize, but John Edmonds, uh, the guy who whose story this is, he actually uh, passed away, as far as I know, last year, sometime in 2022. So, thank you very much, Graham There's Hammer. What's up, Graham? In the lighthouse lingo, looky with your handsome logo, bright as a lady's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, and Mango also says, R.I.P. Jeff Beck. Holy crap, he died? Okay. Damn, I would have thought he was dead already. He had been old. Really well, old. Well, you know. He was old when I was a kid. Was he? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. In his 30s at least. When I was in high school, he was in his 30s or 40s. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, well, what are you going to do? We're all going to die someday. <laughs> it's, an ev it's eventual. Yeah. Just... just it's the way of the force. Mango said he was 78. 78, okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so he actually, lived a full life. Actually, not as old as I was, as yeah. I thought he was. But yeah. He lived a full life. Um, let's see. Richard Brown said, just finished Hopeful Monsters, which is one of my books, if you guys didn't know. It's short stories. Uh, he says, the best short story collection I've read in a long time. Thank you very Thanks. much. That yeah. is so awesome of you to say. I am like always really, really stressed out when people read my stuff. <laughs> because I'm like super critical of my own shit. But uh, yeah, he said you're a very talented writer, Jenny. Thank you very much. That's that means a lot. That means a lot. Do I'm glad. A, I'm glad you liked it. Do we have a hopeful monsters commercial? Uh, yeah, it's in it's, it's in, in, in one there? of the strings. Okay. All right. Because I kind of feel like I've written a couple novels too. Um, but usually I tell people to uh, start out with the short story. I have two short story collections. The yeah. other one's called Associated Villainies. Because uh, over the past couple of years, patron patronage on um, uh, kind of slipped. You know, we we're missing like three hundred bucks a month. Jenny had to double down on the amount of shows that we do a, a, a week to try to make up for it in ad re revenue. And boy, the ad revenue money kind of comes in. You got to wait several months for it to back up. And um, if we can get the patronage going right, Jenny can get back and writing a book. And we can kind of taper off on some of the... Maybe I mean, I already have an idea for it, and yeah. I already started writing... Um, I have probably, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'd say a quarter, but I have, like, quite a bit of one. I just haven't had, like, time to... What is it? True crime? Or is it a... It's a, it's a horror fiction, but it's based on a true okay. crime case. All right. But it's, like, a fictionalized supernatural kind of thing. But it's based on a real case. Uh, Zach says, I forget the story name, but one of your shorts I'm always thinking about is the one with the giant man-eating pearl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I wrote that one for, I was actually writing it for, because every now and then, like, I'll try to write a story for, like, a particular, um, what do they call it? Like, a, a compilation, like, where they were like, hey, we're doing a you know, a book of whatever, kind of, like, zombie stories or whatever. So they have a call for you know, uh, I, why can't I remember words today? I don't know. A call for admissions? Admissions? Okay, is yeah. that the word I'm looking for? Submissions? Submissions. There yeah. we go. <laughs> I'm not having a stroke, I yeah. promise. I mean, maybe, I hope I'm not. But, uh, yeah, so that, so that was, um, they were going to do one of, like, giant monsters, and I thought to myself, it's like, wouldn't it be funny if, like, the monster wasn't, like, a big lizard or a big bear or something like that? Wouldn't it be funny if it was, like, a giant oyster? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, the story kind of, like, went from there but yeah i actually really like that story too i don't know if it's my favorite of all the ones i've written but um but i did i i did amuse myself with that one <laughs> uh yeah so tom sykes says alien grays suck ass for hurting and killing defenseless animals in both this case and skinwalker ranch case i was thinking that too i was like so i'm gonna tell you guys like ahead of time that this case in particular and I'm just gonna say right out the gate, I don't really believe any of this stuff happened, but you know, we'll we'll see. But we'll we'll get Tom's take on it. 
But if it did really happen, um, these aliens can kiss my ass because they are really fucking up some animals and I don't like it. So you think this is a tall tale? Uh, yeah. I okay. mean, it's pretty outlandish. I'm going to say that right now. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm interested now. <laughs> yeah. It's a we'll very see. outlandish story because I kind of knew some stuff about it. Like I knew about the UFO angle or like the alien angle. But then, like, when I started researching, and I was like, holy crap, this is one of those ones that just has, like, all the things, like, yeah. going on. You know what I mean? Like, just throwing everything but the kitchen sink in I wish there. I could do Art Bell's voice. Be, now would be the time to do Art Bell's voice about skin, yeah. you know, Skinwalker Ranch. And all the, he, motherfucker, he was, he was great. <laughs> He'd get me in the mood to hear some fucking bullshit. <laughs> Half the time it was bullshit. Most of the time it was bullshit. But it was, he, could make, he, he, could, he, he could make any bullshit story sound exciting you know uh and some of the shit i don't think was bullshit you know like the phoenix lights when that happened somebody sent me a um an archive of all of fucking art bell's shows or at least all his best ones and there's a, a segment of all the phoenix light stuff from the very first time he mentioned it all throughout and then all the guests and that that was real interesting but it's a lot of material you got to go through because it's the whole show yeah. You know what I mean? His shows went on like three hours, four hours. Ain't no one got time for that. Yeah. Well, no. Well, there's commercials are in them, too. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, could somebody recorded them with, on a damn... Remember those old re recorders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how... Because that's how a lot of them were recorded. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where the originals are. I guess they all belong to... They're all up at fucking uh, Art Bell's place after he died. So the ones that exist are... Ones that people recorded from home, I guess. You hear the static and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Sykes says, uh, there's an interview with John Edmonds on the Project Camelot uh, YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I saw part of that. Where Carrie Cassidy is interviewing him, and in the background you can see an alien gray head peeping its head around the corner. <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw yeah. that clip. Is and it fake? I'm, um, fake looking? To me it looked kind of fake, but yeah. I don't really know. Okay. Like, it, I mean, it was pretty well done if it was fake, but I'm just kind of like... Damn. I, I don't know. Do you think it was CG, or do you think it was a, a mask? It looked like CG. It looked like CG. To okay. me. But what do I know? <laughs> I wasn't there. I'm just saying it looked It looks like kind of files. CG. Yeah. yeah. It was, you know. <laughs> it's a pretty It's a pretty famous uh, clip, actually. Yeah. Okay, but, so the gray is fucking looking in through the window? The, well, no, he's the in the house. He's in the house. Like, he's okay. kind of, like, peeking around the... Okay. It's, I guess it's, like, the corner of the wall, because there's, like, the back of the couch. Yeah. And then he's like a little, but you couldn't really see him. He wasn't like super clear, like, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? It was just kind of like a little bit of a. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then uh, he also said uh, Zach Baggins and his crew visited Stardust Ranch and seemed yeah. to think it's legit. Now, didn't they, as far as I know, they thought that it was legit, but they didn't think it was extraterrestrials. I think they thought it was demons. Because there's all kind of like other weird shit going on with this. That's um, some of it's like extraterrestrially, but some of it is kind of like poltergeisty. Okay, you know it, what I mean. That's kind of the way Skinwalker Ranch. That's started. what I'm saying. This is kind okay. of a similar story. Okay. I just feel like it's not as well known as Skinwalker Ranch because everybody's everybody knows Skinwalker Ranch, right? We even did a show about yeah, that. Yeah, who bought that thing? Didn't didn't uh, wasn't it uh, Le O'Lear? Yeah, and didn't he, somebody like kind of famous bought it and then uh, like yeah, and, they're tr and then they tried to like launch some kind of space program from there or some uh they were working for the air force to try to figure out ufos there was some shit like that yeah i remember how it happened i'm not real familiar with the skinwalker ranch anymore i, I my bullshit detector kept going off yeah we did a show about, about it but i don't i mean i remember some of the details but not yeah. like a lot of them and now it's probably going to be all taken over because yeah. I'm like just doing the research on this I'm like this sounds just like Skinwalker Ranch yeah. but it's kind of like the same thing and I don't even remember when that shit started because oh. this one supposedly started in 1996 I feel okay like. are there any shout outs or anything like that we have to do before we start the show well I think we shouted him out on one of the movie reviews but I always like to do it on the main show as well is our new patron who mm -hmm. is Hugo oh Hugo Hugo is oh okay here. thanks yeah. Hugo remember because yeah, yeah. um yeah. yeah, I shouted out before, but like yeah, I said, I, I, I usually like to do it. Why is Splatoon sitting there? That's yeah. been there since we did the review Man, of give it. give me that thing. 
<laughs> that's supposed to go. I in, keep waiting that's for supposed you to, to go in a damn video archives. This I keep waiting for you to take oh. it back in your man cave, yeah, and you just never take it. And I'm surprised he only just now noticed it. It's been the, it's been there for like however many months it's been <laughs> since we since we reviewed Platoon, which is a long time ago. But yeah, he's just I don't know. It's been sitting there all this time because you know I never fucking straighten up in here. It's like there's just stuff everywhere. I don't know what to do. Uh, Tom Sykes says aliens and dimensional beings are the same thing, in my opinion. Yeah, I kind of feel like I don't know what's going on at this place. I really don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like I said, we'll get into it. We'll get into it because, uh, yeah. So Zach is saying, uh, I'm imagining, I guess if he's talking about, I think he's talking about the, um, my man eating pearl story. I'm imagining that imagery from it as a movie. That's kind of how I imagined it. Well, that's how I imagine, um, things when I'm writing them. I imagine it as though I'm watching a movie and then I'm just like writing down what's happening in the movie. That's so probably that's why. So I bet it'd be badass. I remember really, I really like the characters too. Oh, okay. So that's cool. That's cool. Mango Badger talking about how Art Bell was a broadcasting genius. Yeah, he was great, man. He yeah. was great. He was the, uh, the grandfather or great grandfather of shows like this, really. This, you know, he was the one that fucking kind of invented this, this type of deal where you just talk about mysterious stuff, UFOs. You know, he launched a lot of dudes. Uh, he had Zachariah Sitchin on there all the time. Is that his name? Sitchin or Sitch? Yeah, isn't it Sitchin or Sitchin? Sitchin or yeah, I can't remember. he'd have him on. Chariots of the Gods type stuff. That's and Eric then, Von Daniken, isn't it? Oh, well, that's a Jar Chariots of the Gods type stuff. Yeah, okay. Said. And then uh, he had uh, old uh, Graham Hancock. That's the first time I've ever heard of Graham Hancock was on uh, Art Bell. And then all this weird shit, you know, about the Star Child, the Star Child Skull. Uh, I think we did a show about that, didn't yeah. we? Like, I don't know if we did an entire show about it. But that I one had me amazed because I couldn't see it. And then finally, uh, I got a... Um, at the time, I didn't have internet. Then I got internet back and went and looked at it. This is back in the 90s. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, man, it, that skull re really is as weird as they say it is. It's weird. an alien. I didn't think that. <laughs> I thought it was some kind of mutant, which is, you know, some kind of a... I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Some kind of birth defect. Yeah. <laughs> Zach also says, uh, Jenny, I've been using uh, chat GPT to come up with story ideas lately. You should try it. It's actually super useful. Yeah, I just heard about that like not too long ago, and I probably will look into. Like I said, I'm really, really hoping like one day that I'll get to finish this fucking novel that I started because I think it'll be really good. But, you know, I just I don't I don't have time. We've got to so. get the patron action up. Yeah, get I mean, patron yeah. action back up. Then we can get back into it. Yeah, that. because I, then I'd have. Yeah more time because now I have to like you know do graphic design work and put more videos out and stuff like that too and I, like I said I'm going to start doing I need to start doing shorts too yeah be, because one they're going to YouTube is going to start monetizing them which they've been talking about for a while and yeah. two um you know you're more likely like people are more likely to watch them because they're only short and like you can draw a lot more people to your channel that way so what's weird is that i try i did an experimental one and it's harder than because you guys know how fucking verbose i am right so it's like really really hard for me to cut down things to like 60 seconds <laughs> you know what i mean I had to like I made like experiment like an experimental one like just to see how hard it was and I had to edit like almost everything out that I said <laughs> you know what I mean because it was like I yeah. I ended up like my initial recording was like two hour two hours two minutes yeah in twenty seconds so I had to like take a minute and twenty seconds out I uh, uploaded a couple short videos they they came off of my Instagram and I just uploaded a couple of them to my YouTube channel. And without even my permission, it put it in the shorts category. Well, yeah, that's where it's, it's going to put a, it if it's... Yeah, if it's a certain length. Well, no, it's not It's not so much the length. It's if it's um, vertical. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If it's vertical, it's 10... It, what I couldn't is it? figure it out. I was like, 10, no, It's 1080 by 1920p. I wanted to move it into my normal video section, and it wouldn't move it there. It moved it into, into shorts, you know. But, well, yeah. yeah, it's always going to put it there. Yeah. Because that's what... Um, the format is that's the shorts format 
Like okay. if it's vertical, like it's a cell vertical. phone video, okay. then it's going to automatically put it, it in It wasn't really shorts. explained to me. The nice thing about I'm it. old. I just got to do it by trial and error. You know the nice thing about it is that the YouTube Studio app. Yeah. Um, you can actually film them right in there and you can edit them right on your phone. And there's like yeah. all kind of really cool shit. You can even do like, gr you can green screen yourself. Yeah out and like you can put yourself like in front of someone else's video like a reaction type video you can do all kind of stuff just like yeah. right like natively like right in your phone because i was just trying to upload videos of my my uh, progress my physical progress and uh, i guess i recorded it upright like you said yeah like vertical because it went over there and i was like no i don't want it over there i wanted it in just regular videos but whatever yeah no, i know well yeah it's vertical so they're gonna yeah. put it in there i got my guys I, I I got er, pretty much everything uh, for the uh, for Bane Halloween costume next year or this year end of this year. I had to send the damn armor vest back. They sent me a large instead of the medium that I ordered. I had to go back and return that today. But the rest of it I've been working on working on a mask, getting that right. Arm brace look it looks good. Um, ordered all the fucking cycles that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get big. I'm gonna try to pick up another ten pounds. And then I'm going to fucking reappear as fucking Bane. You guys will see it. It's going to look good. It's going to look good. That's a costume where you got to fucking put on some weight to do it. It's going to be nice. I'm going to be crazy, though, when I start doing it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll what see. else is new? We'll see. Well, I mean, crazier. Than, yeah, I'm going to be crazy than, than, than normal. Usual. I'm going to do some trend. But you guys will have fun with me. Fucking, I'll be doing shows during that. Uh, you know, I'll fess up when I'm on cycle. I'll get so, all the, uh, so everybody will know when he starts, like, yelling and crying and stuff. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> Trend, I'm, a, I'm trend, gonna make you watch the Ghost and Mrs. Muir again. Yeah, trend makes, <laughs> when you're on the <laughs> trend makes me a hoe, man. I start fucking getting all sentimental and shit. Oh, just yeah. Be, I like. Jenny lo loves it when I I'm like, on it. I like, on, you on, like that. I, I get all sensitive and shit. I'll be like, <laughs> I can't believe the dog died. <laughs> but see, like I said, that's what I'm like all the time. When I was doing research, just to kind of pull it back to the, yeah. like, link it back to the topic, when I was doing research into the Stardust Ranch and yeah. it's like all of these animals got killed, I was just like, I don't I don't even know if I can continue this. This is making, yeah. me, this is making me really, really sad. <laughs> well, I've told you that. I've gotten to a thing now. It's like, I still, look, I love horror movies. Yeah. I can watch horror movies all day long where people get killed. I don't give a shit. But, man, the second you do something bad to, like, a cat or a dog... I'm yeah. just kind of, I'm watching it. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to watch this anymore. <clears throat> you know, I usually still do because I'm like, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. But it's like, you know, it's just fun. I know that's fucked up, but it's like, I don't really, I don't really care if people get killed in a horror movie. I'm hardened to that. <laughs> I've seen enough dead people where I'm just like, yeah, that shit happens. Yeah, I'll be there soon. But, you know, I mean, the little innocent animals and, the, you know, and the babies and shit. Like, you're like, oh, they didn't even know why. You know what I mean? It's, that's you know, what, yeah, I think yeah. that's what bothers me. Right, right, right. That's what bothers me, too, is that they don't understand why. Yeah, because it's yeah. like, right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way it is in nature. You got to fucking buck up about that because they're getting eaten alive in nature by shit a lot of times. You know I mean? They don't really know why. They just know they're being eaten. They're just, ah. You know, yeah. people chewing their legs off and shit. You know why they're still alive? And some it's sweetheart, big old cats. You know what I mean? Got a hold of some zebra, and one of them's trying to choke it out. And the other one says, "Oh shit, man, this leg! Oh hell yeah! Just I'm already just gonna eat take, this. I'm gonna start eating already." While Super not, fresh. While while the boy while his friend hasn't even fucking finished strangling him. You know, so nature's brutal like that. It's just sad. You know, that's it how is. it is. It is. Yeah, I know. They all go to the happy hunting ground afterwards, anyway. Crossing the Rainbow Bridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they go. To, they go across the Bifrost to Valhalla. <laughs> uh, uh, Richard Brown says uh, the glass ceiling was brilliant. That's one of my short stories, by the way. Thank you very much. That was another one where the prompt was write a story about a cursed book, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to write about like a spell book or like an Evil Dead type of thing. I said, what if it was an employee handbook? that was like a cursed book so that's yeah. where i got that idea from that uh date uh, dave is here what's up dave uh like your five movie by year review you cut out one flick bam a short well i was kind of thinking of doing what did you say what did he say I didn't no understand well it. it's it's all right i know okay, okay. i know what he's talking about all right but um well what i was trying to do like the test that i did 
I was kind of like, oh, okay, I'm going to go like five movies that like five horror movies that I'm looking forward to, like that are coming out this year. And even though I only talked about each one for like a few seconds, it's like, it was still too long. So I had to like cut out a bunch of stuff. So I was like, maybe I should just do like one at a time. Like that would probably be better. Cause a minute is really not that long. Mango says YouTube shorts are a waste of time. Just them trying to compete with another platform. Oh, they totally are. They're trying to complete with compete with uh, TikTok and uh, you know Instagram uh, stories or Instagram reels rather. But I mean, I don't know. I just thought maybe I would try some out because they do because um, they do get a lot more uh, viewership than longer videos do, and sometimes that'll bring people to your fucking shit that you know that might not have found it otherwise. But I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to try and experiment with them and see what's going on. Dave's telling me I need to do some uh, day, uh, Bane Reacts videos. That would be funny. Yeah. Thing is, is uh, I got to get, um, I gotta get uh, the Tom Hardy Bane voice down. I can do it. I just have to um, get used to doing it. Um, I have to start practicing it. You got to get ready for any role. I can, do, I can do Hispanic Bane, like Danny Trejo. Especially when I get mad. I did it for Halloween. The little kids loved it. The kids loved it. I was scared, and I was scaring the teenage girls and shit coming with fucking uh, with Hispanic Bane with my luchador mask on, handing out candy. So I just got to get in in, uh, in character for it. But um, yeah, I got to do his. I got to get his voice down. I had to watch the movie and practice it. Um, uh, is it Jen Jen Pico or Jen Pico? I'm not really sure. Uh, they're laughing at my description of this show. Bigfoot type creature and men in black in the mix too, because of course there was. That's what yeah. I'm saying. There was like it wasn't just yeah. aliens, it was just all all the things. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All the things. Yeah, you'll have a good time with okay. this. Uh Tom Sykes says, I hate that they killed his Rottweilers, which are the best dogs ever, in my opinion. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of cruelty to animals in this one. Uh dogs get killed, horses get killed. But was this made up? Can he prove that these animals died? See, that's what I mean. I'm I'm going to come out right now, and I think this whole fucking shit was made up. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Because it's easy for a guy to tell a story. Yeah, they killed my horse, they killed my dog. But it's real hard for him to kill his own dog to fucking, you know what I mean, to, to perpetrate a hoax. Well, yeah, I mean. So I'd like to see these animals. I mean, did, he I take, did he take pictures of the dead bodies? No, probably not. Okay, we're going to see. I just get it. Like I said, there's not a huge amount about this. Yeah. I will say that the dude, John Edmonds, wrote a book about it um, with somebody else. And I was like, please tell me it's on Kindle Unlimited and I'll read it. But no, it's $10 for the damn ebook. And I was like, I really don't have $10 to like be spending yeah. on this kind of stuff. Yeah, money's so, kind of tight. So I had to like go. Because if it yeah. was free or if yeah. it was like a couple of bucks, I would yeah. have read it. But I was just kind of like, $10, that's a little steep. Um, and so basically what I did was there's not a lot of written stuff about it. There's a lot of podcasts about it though. So I went through and some of them are quite long and quite involved. And I will say too, that a lot of them, and I'll kind of point this out as we go along, but I kind of like, I listened to one and then I took notes on that one. And then I listened to like some other ones and I made notes like where they differed from one another. Cause the accounts like are slightly different, like in some of the yeah. details, you know what I mean? Which is going to happen, yeah. you know? Hey, Parker, we might be going out to Mannequins this... Not Mannequins, but... Uh, uh, yeah, to Mannequins this Friday. Maybe. Oh, you want to go Friday? Yeah, Friday or Saturday. Because Memento is Friday, but I don't know if you want to go to that or... Because, man... Yeah, we been kept going to that. We're going to that over and over again. We did go to that on... Well, we yeah. went to that on New Year's Eve. That was fun. Yeah, it's just... For me, it's not as fun as as, uh, as Mannequins. Well, and I'm going to say that Mannequins is usually more fun on Fridays than it is on Saturdays. Yeah, I'd rather go to Mannequins. Well, if you want to get a more, well, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't have no money, so I got it. Okay, I got it. I'm just telling you. Yeah, Jenny's so, broke, people. We, so, so, super chat. So don't comments. be, so don't be like coming home yeah. and be like, "Hey, want to give no. me half the bar tab?" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't got that." I think that. I got. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I don't I got, got that. It. Pretty sure I got. I don't got that. It's not like I don't. I think I have to pimp myself out this week. <laughs> Maybe you should start. That's why I start pimping, pimping myself out. out. Yeah, you should start pimping myself. yourself out. I already got an offer for porn. Yeah, I mean, maybe... Quinn Studios fucking saying, yeah, we'll take it. And I was like, come back with your test and we'll put you right to work. How much do they pay? They don't want to pay them. Oh. Well, I was going to say, if they paid a lot of money, you might, nah. want, to, you might want to consider it, but... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're just going to pay, like, some fucking shitty ass yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. I mean... You gotta... See, Jenny's, now Jenny's trying to pit me out. 
Now, Jenny's trying to pit me out of these fucking porn hoes. It would have to be a lot of money. And they're all married women, so, you know, fucking... It would have to be a lot of money. Well, yeah. hey, better you than me. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Well, you know, they're, they look, they're looking for dudes like me. <laughs> Y'all like guys who are in good shape, fucking old enough age, and fucking look scary and shit. <laughs> yeah, you're scary. Yeah. Samantha well, I got says, a good wardrobe for porn. Yeah. <laughs> Just shut my fucking. Got a good car. wardrobe. Got a good wardrobe for porn. Yeah. <laughs> shut my fucking new rocks, new rock boots, and fucking and nothing else. Just yeah, no, no. Just new rocks S- and underwear. Super tight, t- fucking black silk <laughs> underwear with your pecker sticking out. And some fucking arm bracelets and a fucking oh necklace goodness. and shit. That's all you need. <laughs> and biceps and shit. That'd be funny. On a right. shit ton of Viagra. That'd be that's that'd be yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay we're in our 50s fuck it <laughs> yeah that's kind of that's that's really one of the only good things about getting old is you don't really give a shit about stuff anymore. anymore it's just yeah. like whatever yeah we got a limited amount of time anyway <laughs> we were good before it don't matter now <laughs> <laughs> yeah Samantha said so where is this ranch it is in Arizona Buckeye Arizona is where it is not too far. I guess it's not too far from Skinwalker Ranch. How close? I don't know. I was listening to a couple other podcasts, and they were talking about Skinwalker Ranch, which, like I said, is in Utah. But I kind of feel like there's not a huge distance between these two because I think they were trying to imply that maybe there's some kind of weird interdimensional vortex or something that, like, both of these ranches happen to be in. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I, I don't mean to be dismissive. It's just this is a crazy story. You know, it's just a crazy story. Samantha's thanking me. What are you thanking me for, Samantha? There's no context. Just, <laughs> just a cape. <laughs> yeah, fucking David Parker, he says he's yeah. going to be there. He's going tonight for the fucking karaoke. Yeah, Karaoke was dead when we Wednesday went. Wednesday night is karaoke. Yeah, we but it might have picked up. That was a long time up, ago. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Murder Hornets, he says, well, yeah, me and Tom got the same payday. That's that VA money. That's when the VA money shows up. That's right. See, I have like I have like I have like two or three little tiny paydays yeah. like throughout the month, so it's like really kind of a pain in the ass because I'm always like, well, gee, I have this bill due on this date, but I don't get money until like a few days after that, so you know what I mean? It's always kind of like a big pain in the like I'm always shuffling money around. You know, I got I mean? my VA money and I'm trying to pick up side hustle money. You know what I mean? Fucking porn's fucking perfect for that, but them bitches don't want to pay. They That's say, what well, I if you want to make like... a lot of money, you got to do gay porn. I'm like, nah, I don't think. So. My fucking, one of my fucking steroid dealers. That's what he does. You know, he 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 does fucking gay. Things. They do, yeah, gay yeah. stuff. Well, gay, gay, gay porn muscle gonna, porn. Yeah, they're gonna pay a lot more. Shit. Well, because like I said, the straight porn. Yeah. Um, you know, men are like a dime a dozen. Yeah. it's always been like that. Right. And I was like, dude, man, fucking. You, you said your girlfriend's cool with that. You know, you being being bi like, oh, I'm not bisexual. I'm straight. This is dude. Come on, we talking about? Because oh, well, it's not like it's affection or anything. I'm not. I'm not kissing anybody. And I was just like, my head was fucking real, and I was like, no, dude, that's gay. <laughs> well, like I said, a lot of a lot of um, that's gay. A lot of porn, like they did gay for pay. Yeah, like a lot of those guys aren't. Yeah. Really, aren't well, he asked me if I like wanted I said, to work they, with they him. They make a lot of money. He asked me if I wanted to work with him because he's got only or fans more money on, than straight. He's got only fans too, and I was like, nah, 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 I'm good. And he's like, no, I don't take it personally, man. You know, I just did. You know, you know, like, no, that's all right. It's just a job. <laughs> yeah, that's the way he sees it. But, you, you know, no, I could do that. Dave says, hey, Jen, I got your back on Friday. I'll buy you a couple Heathers, my go-to. Who is that? Dave. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I would okay. appreciate that. That's really nice. I don't I don't mean yeah. to, like, cry poor all the time, but I, see, I am super. No, l- lately she's crying poor. <laughs> don't let her. She's just trying to weasel out of that. No, past couple months, it just started to pile up, the, and the bills piled up. But, yeah. it, it, you know, we get, like I said, we get some more patrons. We don't need, it, it was only a couple hundred bucks. Is a make or break. You know what I'm talking about? We were at that point where we were comfortable, and then we fell down about 300 bucks a month, and that was enough to put some pain on us. Because it's not so just, I mean, the thing about it is it's not just, like, paying for the house and shit like that, but it's, like, because I have a bunch more bills than you have. Because yeah, I went into debt a long stuff. time ago, yeah. so I went into debt. Like, so she's I have got, like, of... two credit cards that she still needs to pay off. Is it two What of are them? you talking about? I have, like, eight credit cards. Is that much? <laughs> eight of them? I didn't realize it was is eight. Is it eight? Maybe it's seven. It's is that many of them? I yeah. thought it was only two or three. No, I have a whole bunch of credit cards. See, she was hiding credit cards from me. Uh-uh. How much a month is? How much? I told month, you. How much? How much a month is your minimum for all those credit cards? I don't know. It's different on each. It's different one. every month. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, so it wasn't all just like MasterCard and Visa. It was some other credit stuff, like store shit? No, no, no. They're all yeah. MasterCard and Visa. They're just like different banks. Like I, I, I have two Bank of America credit cards. I have a couple of Capital One ones. I have a oh, couple I didn't of, know that. Yeah, a bunch oh, of different shit, ones. Man. See, she's keeping shit from me. No, I'm not. I'm I told you, you that I'm before. I'm going to have to put you out there fucking working. Get you out there on that fucking street corner. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm giving you out, man. I'm having shit paid off quick. No, I'm, not, I'm just bullshit. <laughs> I couldn't do that to her. We got to get that shit paid off, though. Well, no shit. Yeah. But, you know, I can't do it now. Cause so I'm, I couldn't put her on the fucking... I couldn't... I couldn't put her on the, uh, now nah, it's, it's, when I purchased this house, I couldn't put her on the, well, on yeah, the I told you not to. I would have fucked I was, it. I, was I like, got declined. I was like, my credit is horrifying. Yeah, I would have got like, declined. You know, it's, I mean, it's not the worst it could be, but it's like, it's like the second tier up, you know what I mean? But that's not just, it's been like that for a long time. Cause yeah. you know what I mean? Cause I had some other things happen that actually weren't. A lot my of that fault, shit happened with her divorce. Do, yeah. It, a lot of that happened with my divorce, which was like, yeah. many years ago. Her divorce when after she had when, when she, and then she got divorced and she lost that house and then she had to live off credit cards for like about a year or so for a while yeah about only about six months I think yeah until she until she re reorganized Jenny and I weren't a cu- weren't a couple during that time we we were friends hanging out almost every day but we were officially weren't a couple no but um, that's just how that shit happened yep and then life took over we never got around to paying those off. Well, I paid them off at one point, but I had, like, fewer then. So it's like sometimes yeah. I kept losing jobs, and then I'd yeah. have to, like, you know, run them up again. because you got it's the like... same problems that y'all have. we got the same problems y'all have. Con- well, and most people have the same most problems, have unless you're a problem. fucking billionaire. Right. Um, Tom Sykes says, the old rich owners of this ranch left all their expensive belongings behind, just like the previous owners in the Haunting of Florida case. Yeah, we'll get into that. We in gotta get bit. to this case. They keep asking questions and about the case. We need to start Richard Brown about. said, UFOs, porn, ghosts, this show has something for everyone. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And then Tom Sykes says, John Edmonds said he stomped those aliens like dog shit, lol. Yeah. yeah, that's, um, that's another thing that kind of makes me think that this is maybe, uh, maybe a little bit fantastical, this story yeah. right here. Uh, is because, you know, he's like an alien killing badass, which we'll get into. That's just a little teaser right there. Uh, so yeah. So John Edmonds, uh, and like I said, uh, as far as I know, he passed away last year. I think his wife might still be alive. Uh, his wife's name is Joyce, but you know, so this is kind of his story. Now, from what I know, I heard that he was, and like I said, you know, take all of this with a grain of salt because... A lot of the stuff, I tried to check into stuff, but there's not a huge amount of info about this. And it's like, there's a lot of podcasts about it. They just kind of like refer to each other. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, so I don't know how true a lot of the shit is. I try to like look into it. So John Edmonds was a uh, psychiatric therapist, I believe. And one of the things that he was really into was, I guess he was into like rescuing and rehabbing like dogs and horses and stuff. So he had been wanting like a ranch to keep said horses and dogs on. So he had a bunch of horses and he had a bunch of dogs. I think most of them were Rottweilers. So him and his wife, Joyce, I heard, I don't know what she was doing as a job when they bought this place, but I heard that she was ex-FBI. I don't know if that's true or not. So they'd kind of been saving money for a while, you know, so they could buy a ranch, a big piece of property. So... They find this ranch in Buckeye, Arizona, which is 10 acres. Now, John immediately loves the place. He's just kind of like, oh my God, it's like we this big thing of land. It's like the house is really big. And, you know, it was kind of, it was a little bit isolated. Like, you know, the neighbors were kind of far away and he liked, liked that it was quiet and everything. Now, evidently, Joyce didn't love the place um, when they first got there. She thought it was a little bit isolated. She thought it was a little bit creepy. Um, And she wasn't all that enthused. But I guess John loved it so much that she was just kind of like, okay, fine. So they bought it. Uh, So they actually moved into the place in July of 1996. So the first weird thing that happened, and this is like the opening of a haunting episode. This is what I was thinking. Because this would be, this is like a great opening to a story. You know, I I was really intrigued by this. So John and Joyce pull up in the driveway of the house. And they got the moving truck and all that. So they park by the front door. They go inside the house. And all the former tenant or the former owner or whoever 
left all of their shit in the house, like just laid out as though they were going to come back. You know what I mean? All the furniture was in there. All the appliances were in there and it all looked brand new. So John and Joyce are kind of like, um, one, why would anybody leave all their shit here like this? And two, it's like they knew that we were coming today and we were moving in. So why didn't they move all their shit out? Because now we have to do it. And that's like not cool. You know what I mean? Because it's like now we have to take the moving truck back tomorrow. And now we know how many room for our shit. Right. So they were kind of like a little bit mad about it. So in one telling, because there's two different versions of this that I heard. So in one telling, they call the realtor up. Um, and the realtor says, okay, well, you guys go into town for a few hours and I'll figure something out. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get somebody to like, come take care of it or whatever. So they do that. And then John and Joyce come back like a few, like several hours afterward. And they find that the house is like completely cleaned out and they're just like, oh, wow, cool. Like it got taken care of, but wow, that was quick. Like how'd they get all that shit out of the house? Like so fast. And so John goes through there and he's like, huh, well, okay. And then though, he goes out to the backyard and he noticed that all of the stuff, all the furniture, everything like that was in the pool, which was, had been drained. Like it was empty, you know what I mean? So it wasn't like all wet and everything. So everything is just piled in the pool. And he's like, what the actual fuck? So, so the they, people were gone. Yeah. And then all their furniture was in a dried out pool. Yeah. Well, now, initially, like I said, there's two different versions. I'll get into that in a second. They got there. All the shit was still there as though someone still lived there. Okay. And then they called the realtor, and they're like, what the fuck? Everything was supposed to be gone because we're here with all our stuff, like the moving truck. And he said, okay, well, I'll take care of it. You guys leave. And then when they came back a few hours later, everything was cleaned out the house, but it was all in the pool. Now, was the pool covered? Was there a tarp there? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know if they were trying to store something for safekeeping in the pool, but that's kind of crazy putting it down in the pool why would you put it down in the pool getting it in and out of there would be difficult unless they're making this story up well see that's what i but see yeah. i really like let me get us some ice whether it was true or not i yeah. really like that so i'm like that's a that's great a opening touch. for a yeah, story yeah. yeah like that you come there and it's yeah. like it would be weird and annoying it's like man they didn't move their shit out which like i said that's not sinister necessarily um, it's just kind of like, oh, what an asshole. Like they didn't get all this stuff out. But then like, if you leave and come back and then all the shit's in the pool, that is absolutely sinister. So like I said, I don't know if this really happened or not, but that's like a really good opening to a story. I like it. So <laughs> just, you know, just from a horror writer point of view, I just really like it. So obviously he's really, really mad. So he calls the realtor back and he's like, why is all the shit in the pool now? Um, and you know, who did you send out here to do this? And the realtor apparently then said, oh, well, I didn't have anything to do with it. I've been trying to call the past owners, but apparently their phone has been disconnected, so I couldn't get hold of them. So that's one account. I've also heard another account of this same incident where the realtor told John that the tenant or the former owner had actually come to the house to get his stuff out the previous day. And that guy had found all the stuff in the pool and thought that John did it. I've heard that version of the story too. So I don't know which one of those is true. Um, yeah, but yeah. So there are some story where like the, the former owner like came there and found all his shit in the pool. And it's like, Oh, Hey, that new guy that, that came here, like pushed all my shit in the pool. Like what the fuck's going on? So those are like two different versions. I don't really know any more details than that, but those are like the two uh, versions that I've heard. So uh, whichever version is true, uh, you know, John and Joyce were just kind of like, well, this is like some fucked up shit, but the realtor is basically like, well, I wash my hands of it. It's your house now. So you just fucking deal with it, whatever. So I'm assuming, I don't know if they kept any of the shit that was in the pool, if they just threw it all out, because apparently it was good stuff. I mean, it apparently was all, like, new furniture and everything like that. It's like, you, you'd think that you'd want to keep some of it. I mean, I would. Anyway. So, they hadn't been there very long. Um, when, the, you know, they were kind of getting settled in and whatnot. Now, John was at the house by himself one day. I think he was just sitting out on the porch drinking a beer or something like that. And I think Joyce was away. She was at the store at work or some shit. So uh, this guy walks up to the house. And John said that he was this real kind of like an old, 
he, uh, I don't know, like, he kind of looked like a meth head from what I saw, like a bum, you know what I mean? Like, he had, like, dirty clothes on, it was all, like, torn and tattered, he had, like, kind of rotten teeth, like I said, so like a meth head. And, uh, so he walks up to the house, and he's carrying a machete, which is, you know, that's, that's never a good sign, is it? So John's, like, watching this guy coming up on the property, and, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a place where there's, like, other stuff around, where somebody would just, like, wander onto your shit, you know what I mean? It's just, like... It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So he's like, uh, you know, can I, like, help you with something? Or <laughs> what's the deal? So the man, evidently, according to John, like, points at the house with the machete. And he says, I live here. So John is like, um, I, you don't, though. Like, I bought the house. You know, I, I, I don't know. What he's like, well, did the past owner let you live here? Like, what's the deal? So, and he was like, well, maybe the guy like squatted here or something. You know what I mean? Or maybe he was friends with the with the with the other guy. So, the guy, this guy, like, just looks at John and then he says, "I kill the monsters." Okay. That's that's what he said. Okay. See, this is automatically. See, this is like a horror movie. Yeah. I feel like they're making it. He's a like, monster killer. He's a monster killer. Yeah. You got a crackhead <laughs> rocks around fucking killing monsters. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. This would make a good haunting episode. It would actually. Well, that's yeah. kind of like the vibe I got when I was yeah. first like reading about it. Um, <laughs> so I kill the monsters. So John's like, oh, okay. Um, but you know, he doesn't want to like antagonize this guy because you know, he looks kind of crazy and also he has a machete on. So, um, he's like, well, tell you what, um, I really don't think I need the services of a monster killer. Thank you very much though. Um, you know, I, I own the place now and I'll take care of it. You know, just like, don't worry about it. So, uh, apparently the guy wandered off and, uh, was never to be seen again, (laughs) apparently. So there's that. So, uh, evidently, one of the things, too, that he noticed, and this is, again, very much like a haunting, he was, like, he contacted the telephone company, like, to get the phone hooked up, like I said. It was the 90s, you know, so before everybody had cell phones. So, he makes an appointment for the phone guy to come out and, like, hook the phone up. So, the time of the appointment comes, and the dude doesn't show up. So John, as you would, like, calls the telephone company. He's like, what the fuck? Like, where, where is the person? So they were like, oh, you know, sorry. Uh, someone will be out there in a few days. You know, really, I promise. So again, though, the appointment time came and went. And again, nobody shows up. So John, really pissed now, he calls the phone company back. And he's like, what the hell? It's like, where is this person? And he's like, you know, he, he went full Karen and was like, let me talk to your supervisor. <laughs> So the supervisor says, oh, well, here's what probably happened is that all of our phone technicians are contract employees. You know what I mean? So they don't work there. They just like call them out and like send them out, which is kind of how most of that shit works nowadays. And they said probably what happened was that they saw the address like on the order and they were like, yeah, fuck that. We're not going out there because apparently what John learned before he bought the or like, you know, after he had already bought the place was that, oh, this house, this ranch, has a little bit of a reputation, like everybody that lives around here. Um, one thing is that it had been used as a brothel, b- reportedly, which, like I said, who cares about that? I don't know, yeah. but apparently some people do. That doesn't do. make it fucking dangerous or fucking haunted. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, one of the other things, though, like, other than being a brothel, which isn't a big deal, but apparently it was a, the site of some kind of, like, government raid, Kind of like along the lines of like a Ruby Ridge or a Waco type thing, which I don't know. It can't have been that big of a deal because I didn't really hear about it. Yeah, it would have been a scandal. Yeah. Um, so, so a bunch of the locals around there, like however minor it was, they kind of thought, oh, the government came in and like murdered people and all this other kind of stuff. So there was like a bunch of conspiracy theories about that. And there was also a story, I don't know if it's true or not, that a guy had kind of went crazy in there, like, I don't know if he lived there or whatever, and had shot himself. Now, I've heard it was a young guy, and I've heard it was an old guy, so I don't know which one of those is true. So, um, also, 
the over the next few months that he lived there, John starts hearing stories about, uh, you know, just among the locals in town or whatever, like talking about, you know, UFO type stuff, animal mutilations, that kind of thing. So he tries to like start asking people around about it, but nobody really, everyone kind of clams up. They don't really want to talk about it because I guess they're scared or whatever. But then stuff starts happening specifically to John. So one night he's driving, uh, he was in town for something and then he's driving back home and he sees a bunch of strange lights in the sky. He said that it looked like the lights were following each other. Like they were all like attached to a single string. That's what he described it like. He said that they glowed like um, orange, like orangish, and that they were like really, really big and really bright. So it wasn't stars or nothing like that. So he said he watched them for quite a while, like while he was, you know, driving and they kind of like went over the hill or whatever. Now, apparently this was only the first time that he saw them. And like over the next, you know, however long it was, he would see these kind of lights a lot. You know what I mean? So because he kept seeing them, I guess he started um, kind of looking into the history of the area a little bit. And evidently, uh, some other people had reported seeing these weird lights uh, in the sky, like over this area of Arizona as well. Um, so I guess like the military came in and like said that they investigated because I guess there was a military base about 12 miles away from the ranch, the Barry Goldwater mil military base. And uh, they came out, and much like they did in the Phoenix Lights case, yes, they say. came out and said that they were flares, test yeah. flares. That's a, when she said, like lights on a string going over a mountain, and I was like, well, that's just like the Phoenix Light, Phoenix Lights. That's the same state and everything. Yeah. So some warning bells are going off. I'm going like, are you, you're not fucking ripping off the Phoenix Lights case, are you? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, if he's ripping yeah. off anything, he's ripping off everything. Right. Because it's like Phoenix Lights. Everything. It's like there's all kind of stuff. Right. And then that famous Phoenix Lights video was within fucking a few miles of an Air Force uh, airport, you know. And the thing is, though, is that the people that were part of the Phoenix Lights incident they saw those flares and they go, yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Those flares fucking were put out hours after the fucking craft went over. The Air Force went up there and dropped those damn flares. So the flares was a cover story. You know, the famous video of the Phoenix Lights is flares. People that saw the UFO said, no, that's not it. That's not what we saw. That was the flares that they dropped later. And the same kind of thing happened here because... Uh, a lot of the yeah. locals, like when the military came out and said, oh, it was just flares. Yeah. Like a lot of the locals came out and said, uh, yeah, well, you guys are always like spreading the misinformation like that. And yeah. that you were trying to cover up like some weird UFO stuff going on. And they said, look, we've seen flares in this area before. We know what flares look like. And that's not what we're seeing. Yeah. It's fucking basic counterintelligence. All right. CIA and shit does it. They do that kind of shit. Fucking military intelligence does it. If you get caught, do something similar to what you're being accused of in that same area. Go, no, 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 and then use it as misdirection. Right. It's gaslighting. I mean, that seems that, like that's, the that's, most... Right. That's what you do. The best thing you do. And you can do it with anything. Tom Sykes says John Edmonds said he and his wife were driving back from the movie theater in their convertible Mustang and witnessed the Phoenix Lights. Of course they did. He wanted to get in on everything, I feel like. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, at this point, uh, John and Joyce have lived at Stardust Ranch for about three months. And then you get some, as if like lights in the sky wasn't enough. Now you get like some weird poltergeist type activity starting to happen inside the house. Um, he, there was a lot of like uh, anomalies, like with the electricity, like lights flashing on and off, uh, TVs going on and off, stuff like that by itself. Um, you got like uh, the, the plugs like around the house, the outlets, yeah, they would um, just stop working for no reason and then start again. Uh, same thing with like their power tools and things like that. They would stop working and start working like shit like that. Yeah. 
And then they noticed that stuff, like little objects and things, were kind of like disappearing. Shit, yeah. like um, you know, mail or car keys or something like that um, would disappear from the location where they were, and then they'd turn up somewhere else, like some time later. Um, and then some things would disappear from their original location, and then several hours would they really pop up back in the same location. So it's UFO and Poltergeist. Well, oh yeah, there's so much more. Yeah, okay, I'm just saying, okay. there's all kind of like all fun right. stuff. But I see, I thought you would enjoy the parrot, yeah. the the poltergeist angle in yeah. this one. He's read all the books. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, he wanted like all. It's like yeah. I said, it's like Skinwalker Ranch, where yeah. it's like we because it's like well, UFO that's not exciting enough. We need to like add all this other stuff. Right. With all, the, all this other stuff. So there was like very very clear like poltergeist activity happening in the house, right? Keys and shit like that because you got you had that happen in your poltergeist. Yeah, but that was poltergeist. Didn't see the UFOs. That's well, the yeah, I'm just that. saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, but see, I feel like sometimes do, isn't there like a small percentage of some like quote unquote poltergeist case or haunting cases where they try to like tie it in with a UFO thing? It's like, oh yeah. well, in this area, like there's all this kind of haunting shit going on, but then there's also like people see weird lights in the sky. And I'm stuff. gonna tie it in right now. <laughs> He's gonna tie it. Should in I right. put on a wig? <laughs> Oh, is it is it wig time? Oh, that's what you need. You need a tinfoil hat. Do we have any tinfoil in the kitchen? We've got to. We may have wax paper. You have a wax paper hat. Don't don't step on her. Don't step on her snowman. That's that's mine. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I don't think you've ever worn that one actually. Uh, I've only worn it once. I didn't like. I didn't really like it all that much. But yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm ready for my gay porn debut. Right. What? Actually, what? I think I get kicked out of any gay porn. I with was this gonna shit. say. Fuck. What? What gay porn niche are yeah, you? Are you? I don't fucking know. Man. It's like, like it's like heavy metal Einstein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Poltergeist activity. Yeah, okay. And tying it in with UFO All right. stuff. <laughs> I've never witnessed fucking UFO. I wish I would, though. I wish I could. <laughs> I want to see that shit. But I have seen Poltergeist. One of the things that I fucking noticed is that some some of the like descriptions of things that, you know, uh, of what a UFO could do kind of reminds me a little bit of how an object would move in, during the Poltergeist event it makes you wonder if me extraterrestrials when they're kind of traveling across these vast distances in space if they might be using a technology that uses the same physics that happen in a poltergeist case yeah. in other words like teleportation or objects passing through other matter interpenetration of matter because matter is mostly empty space yeah, it should pass through each other, but they don't. There's other forces involved which prevent it. But you might be able to bypass that. It's the same thing with space, you know. Under normal circumstances, the quickest distance, the quickest direction from one point to another is a straight line. But what if you made here and there the same place? You know what I mean? Like a wormhole and just appeared and disappeared. It's what it would look like to everybody else. But you've gone into a hyper dimension and then back down into this dimension. My idea is, is that what you see in a poltergeist case might actually represent physics that you might build, build a machine and actually exploit that. You know what I mean? Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Sykes says we got Dr. Emmett, Emmett yeah, Brown yeah, in the yeah. house. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, El Padrino just came in and said, good evening, what the hell did I walk yeah, into? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what I'm saying is, is if a human being can cause a poltergeist event, what, why couldn't you do that techn with technology? Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Because there's some, something having to do with the forces of nature and physics there. So if it's if it's a reality, then that means you can build a machine that can do that, which would be cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Go to the restroom. So, uh, so yeah, so we got some poltergeist activity happening. Like I said, um, probably as as you would, 
you kind of feel like, uh, yeah, I just put the keys down and then like you come back and they're gone. And then like an hour later, they turn up in the same place. Like you think you're going nuts. Like if that happens a few times, I mean, I've had some weird shit like that happen too. So I get it. So, you know, so John apparently was kind of doing stuff where he's like, okay, I'm going to put this down right here. I'm telling myself right here that I'm putting it right there. And then he comes back and it's gone. But then like a few hours later, it'd be back again. So he's just like, what the fuck is going on in this place? So he also started reporting um, kind of like uh, drastic temperature changes in his house, um, you know, changes in like air, pre like, you know, the pressure, barometric pressure, I'm assuming, like stuff like that. Um, he described it, I'm, I guess in his book, that, you know, like the barometric pressure when it changes during a storm and you get like that weird feeling like a lot of times like before we had like really bad storms i get like a really bad migraine or something like that so i guess it was kind of like that so uh he also and this is also very poltergeisty is that he started to notice that when he was particularly stressed out or angry or something like that that it would trigger the you know the kind of poltergeisty activity like you'd get like I said, your electrical anomalies, like, you know, things turning on and off by themselves, like TVs and stuff, like objects disappearing, um, you know, shit falling off the table, like plates and things like that falling off and breaking, stuff like that. And he started to notice that it was doing that more when he was angry or stressed out. So, like I said, that is very poltergeisty. Um, so now we're getting to the part with the little, uh, with the animals here, because he said, what the hell? Uh, she says no. What's the matter? No. no, no, daddy, no. Yeah, she yelled, but she, she was like, Marr. "She loves it when I wrestle." <laughs> yeah, we're just playing. We're doing a show. Get, yeah, okay, get down. No, here. she's like, <laughs> stop, stop. Now, like, she's, now look, she's calling me to come down. <laughs> calling me to come down and play. Okay, she's like, play with the toys. <laughs> she wants me to go down there and play with the toys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She loves her daddy. Yeah. But um, but, yeah. <laughs> So he noticed that the animals were also behaving very strangely, like whenever any of this stuff would happen, like the pressure changes and everything. So he knew that he wasn't just crazy, that he wasn't just imagining it because the animals were like, Whoa, what the fuck's going on? They're like the same kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. So like I said, this is where the, where the fucked up stuff has, starts happening to animals. So I'm just telling you ahead of time. I'm just, I'm just making myself feel better by saying maybe this, none of this happened and it's not real. But so he's John one night is walking around checking on uh, all his animals and he had like a bunch of kennels like for his all of his Rottweilers that he had and he got there and he found one of the doors of the kennel kennels was open so he goes in and he finds one of the dogs dead and the dog is like completely smushed like completely flat but like no blood or guts squirted out or nothing like that like, you know what I mean? Which, like I said, sounds a little... Sound. Dog was switched, squished flat. It was still... Where was it squished flat? Like in a cart... Like in the kennel. Yeah. Like in a cartoon. Like in a okay. cartoon when like... A, yeah. When like the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> when the when the steamroller goes over you, I guess. Did that's, they have a photograph That's of what it. I picture. Did they have a photograph of it? Of course not. Where's the body? Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying he's making it. Yeah. Up. Because if some paranormal shit happens... And I've seen paranormal shit. We try to take pictures of every fucking thing. We tried to catch things happening in the moment that they happened and we couldn't catch them. But we took pictures, you know. Yeah. And if we ever had something like that, if we ever came across a dog that was squished flat, we would have saved it, put it in a damn Ziploc yeah, bag. In the freezer. Or in a freezer, yeah. So I, yeah, he's like, look at this weird shit. Yeah, so it's, no, no I don't believe that. Holy Parish of Doom said, Acme safe falls from the sky. That's yeah, kind yeah. of what I was picturing. I was thinking of it like a cartoon. Um, so what did they do with the body? Did they say? No, it doesn't. See, yeah, matter. conveniently, we're, we're not going to talk well, about Well, see, it. there's a lot of convenient stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, we're going to talk so about what gonna we say. did with the body. I'm just going to say. Right. Um, yeah, Tom Sykes said the same thing happened at Skinwalker Ranch. The dogs were vaporized into liquid mush. Yeah, that's right. I have forgotten about that. Did they get a sample? Probably not. Well, yeah. now, we are going to get into that a okay. little bit later because there was some samples happening, but we'll, okay. we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, so John says his dog's, like, smushed flat, but there's no, there's nothing around the animal that, like, would imply that there'd been anything around there. Yeah. Um, and he said he hadn't heard any of the other dogs barking. Uh, you know, they were all out in the kennel, so I'm assuming they were just like, oh, my God, it's Herb. It's like he just got flattened, and then, like, they didn't say anything about it. You know what I mean? Um, 
And a bunch of other animals, reportedly, on the ranch uh, would also die in similarly weird ways. Like, there wouldn't be any noise. Like, there, like the animals wouldn't get upset or anything like that. He would just, like, find them dead. And they would be, like, mutilated, like, in weird ways. Like, one of the horses, supposedly... Um, or maybe more than one, but I, he would sometimes find the horses dead and like, they had like their eyes missing and like their tongues missing and stuff like that. Which, like I said, that's pretty common in like cattle mutilation type Yeah, stories. which I got something to say about that. Yeah? Yeah. If you come up around farms, I've been around farms, of course, you know, my family's been involved with them forever, the horse industry. If you find a dead animal, which is kind of, it's kind of rare in the industry, but you do find dead animals... Um, things like that are going to happen, depending on what the weather is, what what type of year, what the environment is is like. In the south, they decompose quickly, but just because the eye is gone, that doesn't mean that an alien got it. Because the birds will go after that first. Well, yeah, that's that's you know, the squishy. They go after the part. damn eye that's facing up or up. They can get to that one. So there's a lot of stuff that, and tongues are soft, and they can get to the shit like that. Other little animals can, you know fox or raccoons you know they'll, they'll go for shit like that because it's, it's a little more tender you know so there's an order in which things get eaten it doesn't mean anything i've seen some of those so-called cattle mutilation cattle and it just looks like normal predation to me or normal scavenging is what it looks like to me but just saying he also claimed that some of the dead animals, but like I said, conveniently doesn't seem to have any photos or anything like that of it, um, seemed like they had like uh, very precise cuts taken out of them, like with sections of their bodies removed, like with no blood. So there was that. Too. That means it was done post-mortem. That's all that means. Well, yeah. You can cut some off a dead creature and it doesn't bleed. Yeah. Just a lot of the shit that I've seen over the years from the cattle mutilation scene, I'm not convinced. It looks like normal scavenging. Um, things do come off kind of straight when some somebody rips a piece off of an animal, you know, or a dog does it. It just, it does, and there's bloat involved sometimes, which helps kind of straighten it out looking. It, people don't know what dead animals look like. You know, that's all it is. Perhaps so. The only thing that looked fucking, the only thing that looked unusual to me is that one in one of those cattle mutilation cases, they showed a piece of cowhide that was looked like it was cut in a zigzag pattern, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And it was, they said, it was, well, it's slightly burned. And I was looking at it and I was going like, no, you know those special fucking fabric shears that do like that? pinking shears, pinking shears, yeah, yeah. That, you can tell that's what somebody used on them. I bet you you could get picking shears that would line right up with that, which means it hoax. You know. Yeah, I mean you can buy pinking shears yeah. anywhere. Right. I used to have a couple pairs of them. <laughs> but they were trying to make it look like a laser beam went down there and did a zigzag cut. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, with <laughs> like a laser would do anybody that. that went to like Joanne Fabrics yeah, or, Michaels or anything would be like, hey, those are pinking shears. Yeah. But yeah, you know I mean, those, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could buy this for like five dollars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I also want to note here when we'll get into this late, well, I don't know if I want to spoil this now, but like, yeah, so we're finding like, um, so dead animals and stuff. So also around this time, uh, John and Joyce started waking up in the morning with, uh, weird marks on their bodies, like weird cuts and bruises and all this other kind of stuff. So they started to suspect that something was like sneaking into their house at night and like fucking with them. You know what I mean? So, basically, John at this point is like, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, some paranormal shenanigans are going on. Uh, Joyce, she was kind of like, well, I, I'm not really convinced. Because she didn't see a lot of the same stuff that he saw, I guess. Um, because she was at work, like, most of the day. So, he saw a lot more stuff than she did. So, John starts kind of getting freaking out. And he's, like, you know, getting paranoid and stuff. So, he starts, like, uh, essentially, like, stockpiling weapons. He's got, like, guns and knives and baseball bats. And he's just, like, got them, like, everywhere around like they're by the bed they're by the so, you know anywhere he goes he has like stuff like that just in case you know what i mean so uh one evening this is a pretty this is this is also like a really good horror story prompt i thought so one night uh john and joyce are gonna go into town and they're gonna have dinner 
So John got ready first and he was like waiting for Joyce to finish getting ready. So he's just out in the living room watching TV or whatever. 10 minutes later, Joyce comes out the bedroom um, and John's like, wow, she's awfully dressed up. And it's like, we weren't going to like the fucking Ritz or anything like that. They were just going to like some local Mexican restaurant or something. That's like, it wasn't super fancy, but she looked like super fancy. And he's just like, okay, whatever. Like he didn't really like question it. Right. <laughs> you know, even though he did kind of like wonder about it. So they get in the car and they go to the restaurant and they sit down and they order food like you do at a restaurant. And then not before the food came, uh, Joyce is like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. So she gets up to go to the bathroom. So John's sitting there and he starts looking at his phone. And then when he looks at his phone, he has a bunch of missed phone calls from his home phone number, which I'm assuming is a landline because I think this is still the 90s at this point. So he's like, wait, what the fuck? Like, nobody's home, so who the fuck is calling me from my home phone? So he calls the home phone, and Joyce picks up the phone from the house. Joyce, who is supposed to be at the restaurant with him and is in the bathroom. Hmm. And uh, she says, where did you go? You just left me here. And he's like, um, what are you talking about? It's like, you're at the restaurant with me? Like, right now, you just went to the bathroom. And then it it occurs to him that he's like, well, I guess I didn't really look at her all that closely. Like, you know what I mean? So this whoever this is comes out of the bathroom. And he looks at her, like, really, really closely. Because Joyce says on the phone, it's like, I'm at home. I came out of the bedroom, like, to leave. And you were already, you'd already left. Like, you know what I mean? And she's like, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. So I kept calling you. So the, so the woman comes back out the bathroom and he's like staring at her. And then he says that he looked at her really close and he immediately knew he's like, oh my God, that's not her, even though it looked like her, but I guess it wasn't her. So I guess while he was still thinking that, guess what happened? Just like in a horror movie, her eyes turn completely black. Not just the, yeah. it's just the whole eye. You know what <laughs> I mean? Um, and then she just like stared at him like, what are you going to do about it? Motherfucker. So apparently, I mean, that, that does, that's like I said, I don't think this really happened, but it's like, that's a great, that'd be a great fucking, uh, story. Anyway, I, I'm really into like the whole doppelganger thing. That's like really, really creepy to me. So, uh, apparently he sees this happen and he's like, yep. And he just like, nope the fuck out of there. And he gets back in the truck and he, <laughs> he rushes back home, leaving, leaving this weird alien doppelganger woman, like in the restaurant, I guess. I don't know what she did afterward. So he gets home and he tells Joyce what happened. And she's like, yeah, we need to get the fuck out of here. Cause that's crazy. But, um, yeah, John was like, yeah, but I don't want to go though, because this is my house. And you know, I, I'm not really like letting whatever this is like, you know, kick me out or whatever. Even though you think normal people, if that happened, I'd be like, yeah, I think we should probably leave. So, um, evidently this whole doppelganger thing uh, this happened, like, more than once, I guess. So, where he would see a doppelganger of his wife and so then, it, like, it wasn't her. So, I, d I don't know what that was about, but yeah. Um, also, the other paranormal activity, like, in the house and stuff, like, the disappearances and whatnot, like, started getting worse and worse. Um, to a point where sometimes stuff would disappear... And then, like, later on, it would, like, fall out of midair, like, onto their heads and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, while they were looking for it. Yeah, which, it's, like, it's poltergeist. Which, shit. like I said, is very poltergeisty. Yeah. And, well, and, like, what I was saying earlier was that he noticed that it would get worse, like, when he was mad or something. Yeah. Which, which like I said, is the same He's kind of shit that He's been reading books happened. about that kind well, of shit. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John Gora said, that reminds me of that scene in Lost Highway. Yeah, I mean, this is very... Well, because David Lynch really likes that whole doppelganger thing. Because he knows that doppelgangers are... That's creepy. There's something really creepy about somebody that is you or is it, but is not you. Or, like, you know... I would be, like, really freaked out if, like, you went to dinner with, like, your, who you thought was your spouse. And then your actual spouse called and is like, you know, what the fuck? Where'd you go? Like, and now who the fuck is this now? It's just, like, staring at you across the table. That's, like, pretty freaky. So, uh, so yeah, so all of this stuff, like, you know, was it falling out there on their heads and whatever. So John, um, had actually kept, he had like a baseball bat, like right by the side of his bed. 
And like I said, him both him and Joyce reportedly have been waking up with all of these cuts and bruises and shit like that, like all over them. But he had never like whenever it was being done to him, evidently, like I guess it never woke him up. But John was thinking, well, just on the off chance that I do wake up and catch some little motherfucker doing this stuff to me while I'm sleeping, then I'm just going to, like, bash him right the fuck in the head with the baseball bat. So uh, one night he reported that he woke up. He did wake up, like, around 3 in the morning, and he said that he felt, like, this little, like, a little hand, like, kind of messing with his arm, like, the inner part of his forearm. So he jumps out of bed, he grabs the baseball bat and swings it at whatever the fuck was touching his arm. And he said that he heard a hissing sound, like a sound like when you release helium out of a balloon, like a kind of noise, I guess it sounded like that. It sounded like that. So um, at this point, it's, this is going in a very communion direction right now. If you guys that, remember that Whitley Strieber book. So after he did that and heard the little balloon sound, then he said that he could see three little alien creatures looking at him, little grays in his room. And they looked like grays, you know what I mean? They had big heads and the big black eyes and all that other kind of stuff and little bitty skinny bodies. He said there was three of them standing in his room and that a second after he actually like saw them, that they just like disappeared. You know what I mean? Like they just went yeah. into like a dead dimension or something. So after this sighting, John says, well, maybe the reason that we have all these cuts and bruises and shit that we wake up with, maybe they're like abducting us during the night. So like I said, this is like communion. Cause he's stealing from that too. Cause that's what Whitley, Whitley Strieber said happened also that like the aliens would come and like abduct him and, do stuff to him like in the night and he didn't remember um so they said though like neither one of them said that they could remember anything in particular that happened but they said well when we did research about other people that said that they had been you know abducted that it was the same kind of thing it's like they have all these scars and wounds and missing time and all this other kind of stuff but they didn't like ha they couldn't remember like what had happened to them so they were like, oh, okay, well, that, that checks out. Like, that lines up, because that's exactly what had happened to that. So apparently, though, now that John has seen the little fellers, um, they were like, oh, okay, well, I guess he's seen us now, so we're just going to, like, run around all free. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he said after this point, he started to see the little fuckers all the time. <laughs> and... <laughs> Like, just running around the fucking, just, like, in the house. Like, they'd be peeking around the walls and stuff and be, like, running around the ranch and whatnot. And he said that he would, he tried to, like, kill him. Like, he tried to, he would throw shit at him or, like, shoot at him or <laughs> shit like so he's that. He's Whitley Streamer on Yeah, you, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. He's going Whitley Streamer. <laughs> you can't fool us. We know all these kids. <laughs> I, I know. I've read all yeah, this shit. You've read like, all this shit. Yeah. I know where you're getting all these details from. Yeah. So yeah. So um, he says that he's doing all this stuff, but it didn't really ever seem to hurt them. Like a lot of times, like he would just throw some shit at them, and they would just go boop, and they would just like vanish or whatever. Yeah. Or they would just kind of like hiss at him, and they'd be like, Curse they come you. up, and they put a, they put the vacuum cleaner fucking hose up in his booty, <laughs> and he'd look at him, and he goes, "How dare you? <laughs> How dare you?" That is one of the funniest fucking scenes in any yeah, movie that has Walken, ever man. been made. I mean... Christopher Walken can play off anal violation, man. So fucking funny. He did it in two movies. He also did it in fucking... Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. With yeah. the watch up this his This watch up my ass. Fucking movie. He was like... Yeah, he, what, yeah, he has streamer. a very butt-centric career, now that, yeah. we're thinking, now that I'm thinking about a it. A fucking vacuum, an alien vacuum cleaner hose came out of the wall, went up into his fucking booty, and he looked at the fucking alien, the, the, he looked at the alien fucking queen, or whatever it was, and goes, how dare you? Like, he was serious, you know what I mean? Like, how dare you? How dare you stick a vacuum yeah, cleaner Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fucking awesome. The funny, you know what? That part was what funny. The fuck? But... I busted up laughing when we watched that movie. Yeah, we did. Fucking... That's like the funniest fucking part. Because you could tell that fucking Walken was on the verge of fucking busting up. Like he was well, how could you not? Laughing his I mean, ass you can't off take that kind of shit like, seriously. What kind of material is this? <laughs> oh, how far my career has fallen. Well, I think one of. 
<laughs> for me, like the funniest part of that, I mean, that part was funny, but the funniest thing to me was that I love the idea that the aliens just had this anal probe just like in the wall like that. Like it was just real convenient. And I don't know why that was like so funny to me. Cause like the implication being that it's like, yeah, they have people up to like anal probe them all the time. So it's like, we always just like to have the anal probe thing just like right there at hand. Cause you never know. <laughs> you never know when you're just going to have to like pull it out the wall and anal probe somebody. <laughs> so they always have to have it there. It was like fucking, it's like having the Roomba, you know what I mean? Like right there, but it was just like in the wall. It's like that just, that was like funnier to me than like the whole, just imagining that scenario, like fucking cracked me up. I was like, look at it since they have the whole fucking shit set up right there. It's like, I don't know. Oh, whatever. But yes. So, um, I'm not really sure. Like I think Tom Sykes said earlier that, um, that uh that john Edmonds said that the that the um aliens had like actually sexually violated his wife but that he didn't really like to talk about it i don't know if that's the case or not like i said um he did write a book and i'm assuming that he put a lot of details in there but like i said i wasn't paying ten dollars for it and i couldn't like a lot of times if you go to amazon's like sometimes they'll let you read some of it like for free but um yeah they wouldn't let me do that and i was like man that's, that's a little expensive i'm not gonna read that because i kind of felt like it probably wasn't worth it but I don't know. But I, I mean, that sounds like some shit that the, that the aliens would do in this situation. And they absolutely did do that in communion. And if that's in this sounds very communion like, so I'm thinking that that's probably, you know, that's probably where that went. But you know what I mean? I'm just, I was just telling them that it's like, I thought the funniest thing about that was that the aliens had the anal probe thing, like right there, just like handy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because you never know when you're, when you're going to need something. That was like part that. of their MO, you know what I mean? So they pick you up, <laughs> shine some lights on your eyes and shit like that, and look at you and put something up in your booty. <laughs> then they go, thank you, and then they, then they drive you back off. That's all we, that's all we yeah. wanted. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Why well, but it's, it's, maybe the aliens, they're from a planet where they have like a, they have like an anal, like a fetish yeah. of some kind. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, that's all they care about. They're just, they don't care about scientific experimentation or nothing like that. They're just yeah. really, really into like sticking vacuum cleaners up human booties. Yeah, it's a vacuum cleaner, definitely a vacuum cleaner hose. Well, that's what it was in the movie, for in sure. The movie, yeah, it was a vacuum cleaner hose. It's just, oh my God, it's so funny. up there and fucking then walk and looks at the camera and goes, how dare you? <laughs> That's his fucking It's the up. best. And Watch he's got a fucking, smile on his face. I mean, this movie. <laughs> he's got a smile on his face a little bit. We reviewed it a while back, but it's like, it's... I <laughs> Whitney Strieber's Communion. Uh, I can't even believe that that fucking Isn't it called Communion? Up. Communion, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, that movie's a piece of shit. I, it, what's funny is that it could have been great. It's almost great. <laughs> but it isn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's almost great, it's but almost, it isn't. It isn't, yeah. It could have been. It could have been, but the material they were working with there was not moviable. I mean, anything like that is just going to be funny. It's, it, it, I mean, it can yeah. be done, um, you know, getting abducted by aliens and having them fuck with you. I mean, that can be scary because they did it in Fire in the Sky. Yeah, it was partially sca Parts that was scary. Parts of it were scary. Parts of it were. But then when he's abducted, then they got these short, little, weird-looking green monsters, aliens that are, like, short and fat and squat with the human faces on them. Remember they were dancing and yeah, being it's friendly like, with him and shit? Fucking wee, and, and, and yeah, I'm just like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not enjoying it. Like, what? That. That's fucking bizarre. What the fuck is going on? It's a bizarre it? fucking movie. Yeah. I had forgot. Do I had... not take acid and watch that movie. You probably lose your fucking mind. Yeah, they like, put well, you in a rubber room somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a real movie. <laughs> it exists. Yeah. It might still be on Tubi. I think that's where we watched it. So it's probably free if you want to watch it. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't advise anybody to watch it, but... I don't know. Get drunk and watch it. It's pr it's a pretty fun time. Yeah, it's it's a fun time because you can't believe that anybody thought that that would that that would be a good idea to make it. Yeah. A movie. <laughs> I dropped acid, got high with my first wife, fucking Tiff, and, and, and we watched a movie called Orlando. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she hasn't seen that. it yet. I saw it a long time and ago. And I thought I fucking hallucinated that shit where where she turned into from a man to a woman and she was. And she would live for fucking hundreds of years and everything. I thought I had hallucinated all that, but that actually was the movie. Yeah. It was a trip movie. It had good music. The music in it was good. Yeah. Gavin Friday. Yeah, there you go. Did a, it's a gay movie, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's a gay movie. It's a gay movie. It's just a movie. It's just a gay movie. <laughs>
It was a good movie, though. Uh, El Padrino said, have either of you seen a ghost or just felt a presence? Um, I have not. Not really. I have. Tom has. Saw a poltergeist and a ghost. Well, I think I saw a ghost. You never saw an apparition. Never saw it. No. No. This is years after the pol- after Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist case had happened. Jenny wrote a book about it. Me and my buddy, uh, Eric, we got out of the army the, like within a couple days with each other. He waited a couple days for for, uh, for me to get out. And we went to Boston together. Because he had, he had lived there before. I'd never lived there. And at the time, I had a girlfriend living up in there. She was at U- Tufts University. So I linked back up with her. That shit didn't work out. Uh, not not long term. Good thing though, what happened to her later. But anyway, um, we ended up moving in this fucking old Victorian house. It was in um, now it was not Somerville, next to Somerville, Medford. I think is what I think I think it was the town. I think it was Medford. I could find it on the map, but I, I forgot the address. And that house was fucking evil. I mean, it just it just had a fucking felt like you were being watched in there and fucking had really bad dreams and uh we'd bring girls over and they would be like they you'd have to walk them to the fucking bathroom and, and fucking guard them on the outside while they were taking a leak and shit and just that was a fucking wild ass house but we never saw anything it was always it was just feelings you know and that, that house is old over a hundred years at that time uh so so i don't know Never saw any apparitions. Never heard any voices. I felt like I came under like attack, but it was like a psychic attack one time. I felt like something was spinning around me, and like there was something, like something was watching me, you know. And it was something like impressing you. But uh, it couldn't. It was just emotion, though. You couldn't see anything. Yeah, I think. And nothing ever moved. So it always had plausible deniability, you know. Is it like is my is it my imagination? But I had already seen a poltergeist, and poltergeists actually throw objects; they move objects and move things. They have that same feeling of being watched, kind of deal, presence. But with that one, I never really could. I, I'm pretty sure it was there, man, because everybody else felt it. But there was never any concrete proof to me, because I never saw anything move, you know. Might have just had an impressive... Eh, I don't know. The place was strong with the dark side. That'd be, that'd be a good place to put it. Good to I say. mean, I, I've i felt like, you know, every now and then, it's like, oh, I felt like somebody was in the room or, like, behind me or something like that, and they weren't. Like, I've had that happen, but not very much. Like, I had it happen one time pretty strongly, like, at my grandmother's house, which is weird because... I never thought the house was haunted or nothing like that, but it's like I was just sitting at the dining room table one day and felt like someone was standing right behind me, but nobody was there. But that's like the strongest time that I've ever felt that. I haven't usually felt that. Now, the interesting thing is that they can actually stimulate some parts of your brain and give you that feeling, um, you know, just by doing that. So it's obviously some part of your brain that's firing for whatever reason. Um, Because they can replicate that, like in a lab. But that doesn't mean there's nothing there. I'm just saying that they can do that. So I don't know if it's just some fucking glitch or... Because I've I've very, very rarely had that happen. The one strongest time I had it happen was at my grandmother's house. And I felt like somebody was standing, like, literally right behind me. And I was like, what the fuck? And then then nobody was there. Because I thought, like, it was my brother or something like that. But nobody was there. So I've had that happen, but... I never seen anything. I've, I actually don't really, I haven't really met that many people that said they've seen an actual apparition. Yeah. Even my my mom and her sisters and stuff like that who grew up in my grandfather's old house, which was supposedly haunted, and they reported they could hear things like they heard footsteps, like somebody in boots walking around on the roof all the time, and they had like their covers torn off and everything. But I don't think any of them ever actually saw anything like a ghost. I mean. Yeah, that one house in Medford, the thing that would get you would be like, just out of the blue, you're walking from one part of the house to the other, and you got to go through a damn hallway, and you're going halfway down through the hallway, and all of a sudden you slow down, you feel like there's something right in front of you. You, know, you don't see anything, but you just feel like there's something there. And you press through it, and you feel, you're so freaked out and scared, you feel like your head is spinning. 
and then you're out of it. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you kind of run from it a little bit, like there was something there. But you couldn't see anything. Yeah. It was just weird. Yeah, it's a creepy sensation. It was like there was something there. It's like there was something standing there in that hallway, but you couldn't see it. And you passed it. You went through it. Yeah, El Padrino said, yeah, I felt that. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people have. But it's just like, like you said, you don't know if it's real because it's like you can't see anything. You can't so see anything. It's just like a subjective. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't do anything physical. Right. So like I said, it could just, I mean, it could very well just be your brain glitching out or something. Yeah. And giving you that sensation. Because they can give you that sensation in a lab, so. But I had seen poltergeists before, and that could move objects, and parts of poltergeists felt like that. Yeah. But, you know, and it wasn't just me, it was other people. Well, a lot of people report that as, like, yeah. um, in haunting cases or poltergeist cases, that's the first thing they feel like, is they feel like they're being watched, or, like, that, yeah. some, that there's, like, somebody in the room that they can't see, you know what I mean? Yeah. Looking that's down very, on you from above. That's or very, looking very from a Yeah. But so, uh, yeah, so where was I? Okay, so John's, like, throwing stuff at the aliens, and um, they're just going, <laughs> and, like, disappearing. Because, <laughs> you know, they, they're just, he's just making them mad. So, uh, so yeah, so I guess John and Joyce are still sleeping in the house, but he now he's, like, waking up all the time because, you know, he, he's wondering if these little fuckers are, like, wandering in his room and, like, kidnapping them and shit like that. So one night he wakes up, and his wife, Joyce, is levitating above the bed you know it happens sometimes so he tried to wake her up uh but it didn't work so you know he's like you know yelling at her and shaking her and stuff but she didn't wake up um he she did open her eyes but she was like looking at him all blank and he actually tried to he pushed her back down onto the bed right and then she basically you know he pushed her down she like looked at him but he she wasn't responding and then when she got back in bed, she basically just, like, turned over and went back to sleep. And then he asked her about it the next morning, and she didn't know what he was talking about. So she didn't, like, remember it. So he said that this happened a whole bunch of times. And he said that each time that it would happen, his wife would kind of... This is gonna... this is a little extended. It's so funny. Um, each time that it happened, like, his wife would kind of, like, float farther and farther away from the bed. You know what I mean? And at one point, she's even starting to kind of float out the room and, like, toward the front door of the house, right? And so each time this happened, because obviously he kept waking up, so he would, like, try to wake her up. And then she would just sit up and she was, like, kind of in a weird fugue or she was, like, in a weird trance or whatever. And she would just, like, make her way back to the bedroom. So he's like, why are you floating all around the house or whatever? So one night he decides, he, see, he wakes up and he sees her, you know, levitating out of the room like usual. And he's like, I'm going to follow her and see what happens so he starts following her so she's like floating down the hallway and he said that there was like a beam of light that was like attached like it was pulling her you know what i mean and then suddenly he says she was pulled through the wall as if hmm. the wall was not solid yeah we, okay that also happened in the uh in enfield in. case it, well yeah that too when uh, little what's her name, the little girl, said she was in bed and she rolled over and went through the wall and ended up in the in the apartment next door, but she had some evidence. She had a book in her hand, and that book was found in the apartment next door. She left the book behind, so there was some cooperation with that, and there was a lot of you know the cops saw that one, cops in the newspapers. Not not that particular event, but they knew about that. They knew about that case. They saw some shit happen. He's been reading a bunch of books. See, I kind of feel I don't remember he's trying to make the granddaddy of all cases. I don't remember if in communion if anybody ever actually went through a wall, but I thought I remembered something like that. Yeah. Unless I'm because I read the book, but it was a long time ago. He's bullshit. So yeah, so apparently um, his wife just got sucked through the wall, like by the thing. So he goes out the door and goes out in the front yard. And then he sees, like, a big, like, a UFO. You know what I mean? Right. So he sees, like, a big disc-shaped UFO about 100 feet off the ground. Um, and his wife's being, like, sucked up into it, just like your classic, you know, your, cla your classic getting sucked into the, into the shit. And uh, it's funny. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Which, where I used to work, we had this lamp that was, the top of the lamp was a UFO. And the the um 
the body of the lamp was a beam. Yes, yeah, so and then there like... was a cow suspended. <laughs> it was the best lamp ever. I don't remember where they got it. I think they just got it from Amazon. It was like so fucking funny. It wasn't like really bright or anything, but yeah, it was just like this beam with like a little cow suspended in the beam. <laughs> and then the top of the lamp was like fucking. It was so funny. It was like the most awesome lamp ever. Uh, you could probably still get them. I don't think so. So, okay. So this part, you're gonna laugh at this part. I'm, I just know. I just know you are. So, so yeah, so he goes outside, sees his wife floating up toward this big mothership or whatever. So, um, he, he pulled the Tom and ran back in the house and got his AK yeah. and started shooting at the UFO <laughs> with the, with the AK. <laughs> Cause you know. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the aliens were just kind of like, well, shit, bro, that's, that's all you had to do. So it actually let Joyce go. I don't know if it dropped her. Like, I don't know how far she was off the ground. <laughs> she was like, bam, like hit the fucking floor. I don't know. Um, yeah, so she got dropped to the ground. So um, apparently, though, she actually did remember this happening. Because remember they said that she'd hap- this had happened a lot of times to her before and she didn't remember it. But she said this time she did actually remember that she got sucked out and then him like shooting at it or whatever. So not too long after this, John starts posting online about stuff that's happening at the ranch like i guess like looking for help or whatever um and apparently though after he shot at the ufo i guess the aliens were like all right dude like chill out or whatever because they stopped trying to abduct anybody and like stopped fucking with them while they were sleeping i guess and like all the weird paranormal shit that was happening around the house kind of like it was still going on but not as bad you know what i mean so, uh, at this point, though, um, he sees something else. He sees something else, uh, some, some new wrinkle in this whole case. So, he's walking around uh, the property, like, checking everything out, which is something that he had taken to doing. And while he's walking around, he sees a 10 to 12 foot tall creature walking upright. What? He sees, okay. essentially, I'm kind of thinking, he, I'm, I'm thinking he saw a Sasquatch. 10 to 12 feet tall. That's what he's saying. He's saying Sasquatch. It's a Sasquatch. Yeah. I don't know if he actually said Sasquatch. Area. How did he describe it? But he said, okay. <laughs> they said, well, the thing about it was he'd seen so much weird shit around this. He's just like, yeah. oh, you know, Bigfoot, of course. Yeah. But um, he started calling it the Michelin Man. Because okay. I guess it was, like, round and like, or fat or whatever. And it was, like, really big. And he said that he saw it a bunch of times. Um, and it kind of was even kind of close to the house sometimes. And he shot at it. But the creature didn't really seem all that phased by that. Okay, so it doesn't have hair on it. like He said that it looked like the skin had what he called the texture of a Brillo pad. Which... Okay. Doesn't exactly sound like a Sasquatch, unless it's a weird, like, it's a yeah. Sasquatch with mange. He saw the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> with mange. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm like, I don't know. It's a, he's, I trying, he's, thought, trying to, he's trying to shoehorn fucking Sasquatch. Well, see, it. that's what I was thinking, because <laughs> there is a lot of, you know, a lot of the UFO cases, they always try to, like, put Bigfoot in there, too, because they want Bigfoot to also be, like, an extraterrestrial or an interdimensional being, and that's why nobody sees yeah. That's why nobody can find the Bigfoot is because they're, you know, going in and out of like wormholes or whatever, or they're from space. I don't know. Isn't that a whole thing where they're no, like, where they try to like hook those two things up? No, I don't know. <laughs> Hooking up what again? Bigfoot and Bigfoot, Bigfoot and, and aliens. Yeah, 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 they yeah. Try yeah. To hook the, like they try I said, to hook there's up ghosts with that. There's a whole subgenre yeah. where they're just like everything is like one. Phenomenon. They're trying to get it all into one phenomenon. Yeah, James, so they can be the king of the fucking show. We got it all figured out. You know, yeah, it's like the grand overarching all, yeah, theory of paranormal all, everything. Yeah, we got it all figured out. But it's it, all the one yeah, thing. It's not though. Fuck no. It's not. Nothing's ever that simple. Come on. Yeah, I would have thought that out of all these fucking paranormal phenomena, that Bigfoot would be the most likely one to be something that really exists. See, I would go with that too because, but yeah. like I said, if Bigfoot exists, it's yeah. not like it's just like an animal. Yeah. Or like a man-like but animal. You know the more I, mean? I look into the details. Of what it actually takes and where these where these sightings came from, I would say that no, Bigfoot doesn't exist. A lot of them were taking place, some of them were taking place in the South and places in the United States where 
if you look at a map, there's nothing but roads around there. That thing would be crossing the road all the time. There's no, there's no real woods or forest, not any big forest. So it couldn't exist there. It would have left an, an environmental impact, and there had to be a breeding population, which means that there's a lot of them. You'd see them all the time, like bears. We see bears all the fucking time. They're in the fucking driveway, waiting for us. You have something like a like a Sasquatch. No, they'd leave a huge impact on the environment. You think because they're big? Yeah, and, and intelligent. They'd be interacting with stuff, trying to steal food and stuff. You'd see them all the time. The only place something like that could exist inside the United States would be up somewhere near Washington State in some of those forests, like some of the national yeah, forests. Yeah, it's like I could see that, but even then. And even then, you'd probably see something pick, pick up shit like that on fucking satellites. <laughs> Body heat, you know, or something. You, you, they couldn't stay hidden for long. And if they're in a place like Washington State, you're forgetting about fucking Canada. Almost all of Canada's like that. That's a big area. But there's people there. It couldn't stay hidden. It couldn't stay hidden. Not for long. Not with today's technology. Yeah, maybe You'd back see. in the old days. Yeah, back in the old days. But anymore. no, it's not there. Stuff like that did exist with like gig, gig, what's it called Gigantopithecus. That was something kind of like a big, Bigfoot, but that was hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's just some kind of race memory that people carry. That, yeah, there was like a man, but bigger, with a lot of hair on it. It's kind of a no-brainer. You might come up with something like that. You know, wild man. Well, yeah, it's not that. It's not that weird. Well, because right. like I said, you know, yeah. things like that did exist at some yeah. point. Now, the gorilla at one time was legend. It wasn't until fairly recently that they actually captured the white man captured a gorilla and brought it to fucking They're like, New York. Like, look, there, it's real. <laughs> they, you know, a wild man. A man with fucking an animal man. Uh, but r the novelty of that wore off pretty quickly. They go, yeah, it's called a gorilla. That was just okay. a gorilla. Boring. A Africans have known about those for fucking thousands of years. Yeah. Okay, that's not new. All right, just they're like, yeah, what's the big deal? White people, <laughs> white people didn't know about them. So, you know, that's all that shit was. So it could be also that st stories about Sasquatch are really just based upon stories about gorillas because there was a time in which gorillas were believed in like, yeah no like no that doesn't exist but it did because gorillas are very yeah. human like yeah and you have to go find them you know back in those days now we know where they live so it's and it's easier to get there but you got you know african forest rangers watching out for them and shit park rangers Tom, Tom Sykes says prehistoric humans looked like Bigfoot, kind of. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like, it might just be a memory of that. Yeah. James Knapp says, if Bigfoot exists, it's likely a human cousin like Neanderthal. But uh, I'm like Tom, hard to think that there are Bigfoots in the southern U.S. They're, they'd have them in trash cans all the time. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like, especially around here, like, shit, man, we just had a bear in the trash can just a couple days ago. You'd hit them with cars. Yeah. Yeah. You because know, they wouldn't, I mean, why would yeah. they hide? Yeah. They just like they just be coming out looking for food like all the other creatures. It's just like there's no nothing in Loch Ness. If there was a Loch Ness monster, for there to be a Loch Ness monster, there'd have to be a bunch of them to have a breeding population, and they'd be big, based upon the description. They would be hiding. They'd be laying up on the bank, splashing around. You know, yeah, like I said, hide. why why would they hide from people? Yeah. <laughs> like it would. Big occur. creatures don't hide. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they're like, what are you going to do? I'm just, yeah. you know, if you come and yeah. fuck with me, I'm just going to step on right. you. Right. Though I wish there was a Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, that'd be, be cool. It'd be a lot more of a <laughs> mysterious world. And when I was a kid, I believed in the Loch Ness Monster that, yeah, there might be something down there hiding. It's mysterious. But that's not the way animals work. Yeah, animals animals don't have any sense of, like, ooh, I'm so mysterious. Yeah, they don't have any, <laughs> No. They just run around yep. doing whatever. They run around doing their own fucking thing. Eating and pooping and, and doing there's, whatever. There's not enough food in Loch Ness. There's not enough biomass there. It's cold and it's deep in certain areas. There's nothing at the bottom. You can take a fucking... Submarines have gone down there to see what's at the bottom of fucking Loch Ness. There's not much food in there. And I don't even think there's that many fish compared to, you know, how big that thing is. There's fish in it, but the, the, the fish aren't very big. There's just not enough food there to support something that big. You know. Yeah, much less like a whole bunch of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's kind of because they're bare. talking about like dinosaur size, which yeah. is massive. Yeah, and that means and and for there to be a massive dinosaur sized creature, there had to be a whole breeding population. So yeah. you're talking about dozens and dozens of them. Yeah, you need a ton of biomass. Yeah, like, to feed and all there's not enough food animals. for that many. Because they would have to eat like a it's just an amazing amount. Yeah, every day. and then they could then they'd have to avoid in, interbreeding. So you're talking about dozens of them, and there's just not enough food there. To, no, we know how ecology works now. You know what I mean? And it just didn't. Let me. I want to make us some more drinks. All right. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, Brillo Pad Monster is is what this was. But like I said, I'm guessing it was like a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch type of thing. Um, but I've never heard him described as like having Brillo pad skin before, but all right. So, uh, as if aliens, poltergeists, and, uh, possibly Bigfoot wasn't enough. A couple months after the Bigfoot sightings started, John's sitting in his backyard, just hanging out, doing his thing. And a black SUV pulls up to his front gate. And guess who this is? That's right, it's the men in black. So two guys with black suits on and black hats and black sunglasses, your classic men in black, they come out the SUV. So John, who, it was him and his neighbor who was like sitting on the porch with him, I guess. So they like watched the dudes come up to the gate and they said that the guys just walked through the gate. Like they didn't open it and walk through, they just like walked through like they were like it wasn't there you know what i mean um so john said that they were very pale and they and said that their skin looked like raw chicken skin is what he said it looked like so one of the dudes just kind of hung back but the other one like walks right up to john and like leans in and says to him you will stop posting your experiences online that's what he said. Because remember how I said that John had been like talking about uh, all the stuff that was going on at the ranch that online. So this guy came up and said that to him, like, and he said, he said it in like this really weird, like creepy flat tone. Right. So John's like, what? Like, like, what did you say? And he said, the guy said it again, like in the exact same tone, like you will stop posting your experiences online. That's what he said. And then the two guys just like turned around and left and again, they walked like through the fence. Like they didn't open the fence. They just walk or the gate rather. They just like walked through it. Like it wasn't there. Like they were made of smoke or something. And then they apparently just got in the car and in the SUV and then just like drove off. So yeah, men in black also. I forgot to mention that there was also men in black involved. So John's like, okay, well, fair enough. So he... <laughs> apparently decided that he wasn't going to post online anymore about all of this stuff that was going on. Um, I don't know. Like they didn't, I guess they did not threaten him. Like they didn't say what would happen. Like if he didn't stop, they just, I guess it creeped him out enough that he just decided he was going to stop. So, so yeah, so he's not talking about it anymore. And at this point he's just like, he just doesn't know what to do. Um, he had gotten, where'd the, where'd the drinks go? Oh yeah. Left him behind. <laughs> well, I had to go to the restroom too. He walks in like, yeah. and he's just like, Coming in, like, with no drinks. Um, but, yeah. So, at this point, he's just kind of, like, uh, he's getting pretty mad at these fucking aliens, man. Because they're not only... You missed the whole Men in Black situation. Okay, yeah, yeah. He yeah, also yeah. had Men in Black Here involved that came to the Here's house the and, and told him to quit talking online about the shit that was going on. You know what I mean? Well, I can imagine. I wasn't here to hear it. Yeah. The men in black showed up and told him to yeah, shut the fuck and, up. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. They told him to stop. Well, like I said, they didn't like threaten him or anything directly, but I guess they were like pretty So creepy. he has every legend. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised that he didn't have any of those black eyed kids. Right. Or I almost said or, black, or black fucking, eyed kids. Or uh, fucking, what's his name? Thin, skinny man. Like, how about, how about, how, how about the Wendigo? Wendigo. He, oh, maybe, you know what? Um, maybe the Brillo pad thing, maybe he, maybe he meant it was Wendigo. I don't know. But I kind of think that it was probably Sasquatch. Tall man. That's what I was talking about. Tall man should have showed Slender up. Slenderman. 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 Yeah. That's like not, that's not even an old legend though. That's no. just a fucking, yeah. that's a creepy pasta. But, um, but yeah. So he's just like really, really pissed at these fucking aliens because these aliens, I mean, these aliens are assholes, right? They're, 
Well, they are. They just, they killed a bunch of his animals, like, in a horrible fucking way. He claims it. Fucking dicks. Yeah, and also, they're, like, fucking with him, and they're, like, keep wishing his wife out the fucking house, and, you know, bruising them up and doing God knows what. They don't remember what it is. Like I said, they could be, they could be sticking, you know, vacuum cleaners up their butts just like Christopher Walken. Yeah. And they don't even How remember dare it. you? <laughs> Yeah, it could be. That could totally be going on. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, okay, and so, so this is a crazy story, too. So John's like, he doesn't really know what to do. But apparently he's like, well, something will happen. Like, you know, I'll, I'll figure this out somehow. So one particular day, John is driving down the road, and he's behind this big truck that had, like, all of this crap in it, like all this junk, like somebody was moving or if it was a garbage or something. Um, so he's sitting there going, maybe I should call the cops. Cause it's like, you know, all, all this shit is like going to fall out of that fucking truck. Like if they go over a bump or something like that, he's like, no, I don't want it falling on my car or nothing. So pretty much as soon as he thought that the truck did hit a bump and a bunch of the random shit like fell out, not onto his car, but like onto the side of the road. So John's like, well, shit, man, I'm going to go and paw through that stuff and see if there's some good stuff in there. So he goes over there to look at what had fallen out of the truck, because I guess whoever was driving the truck was like, ah, fuck it. And they just kept on going. But mixed into, like, it was mostly just a bunch of crap, like, just junk and stuff. But he's like, so I start digging through it, and I found a samurai sword. And he's like, and it looked like a real one, like an old one, you know what I mean? So he's like, ah, well, okay, I'm going to keep that motherfucking thing. So he put it in the front seat of his car. And, uh, you know, went back home. So, uh, basically he gets home and he shows it to his wife and he's like, Hey, she's like, where the fuck did you get that? He's like, it fell off the back of a truck, <laughs> which is what they used to say about like, Hey, where'd you get that VCR? It fell off the back of a truck. Yeah. So, um, this is, I should note that this has actually been happening over quite a long period of time. Like in case I hadn't made that clear, um, they moved into the, into the place in 1996 and, um, I think like by the time that he got the samurai sword and all that, this was like 11 years later. So they've lived here for quite a long time with all of these shenanigans going on. So he puts the samurai sword, he keeps the samurai sword like next to his bed, just in case like the aliens think of it trying anything. Like it's You're better, right. it's better than the baseball. Yeah. Bat. Fuck I'm that AK. Saying. I'm going to put the samurai sword. <laughs> Didn't he have an AK earlier? He did. I think he had more he, than one. He yeah. had like a bunch of guns. Yeah, he had like a bunch of guns. at the UFO with the AK? Yeah. He's, yeah, well, yeah. he shot at the mothership, for sure. The mothership. And it's like, I don't know if he hit it or nothing, but, like, the aliens were just kind of like, hey, chill, like, chill. The mothership you know I mean? is the size of a fucking shopping center. How could you not hit it? <laughs> Maybe he's a terrible shot. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't trying to hit it. Maybe he's, I don't know. I don't like know. Ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous ass fucking story. This is a ridiculous story, but it's super yeah. fun. I, th I thought it was yeah. super fun. Because I, I liked that he just, like, threw everything in there. You know what I mean? Um. So, so yeah. What he decided to do was that he said, because all of this crazy shit had been going on for such a long time, that he had pretty much, he had pretty much got to a point where he knew when, uh, the greys were going to show up or when some like weird shit was going to happen. Like he could feel it in the air or whatever. So he's like, he would get prepared for it. So one particular day, this is, you're going to, you're going to crack up. Okay, you're you're right. going to love this. Okay. Um, so one particular day he's just hanging out in his living room, like watching TV and working on some mechanical shit or whatever. Like, like a man do. Yeah. Man got to do his fucking <laughs> Watching TV, work, do, yeah. working on some machine parts yeah, or something. Yeah. Greasy hands. Probably getting grease all over the yeah. carpet. And his wife's like, what the fuck are you doing? Because Take I that outside. I cleaned it up. I cleaned it up. Yeah. What, yeah. Whatever. They never do though. No. So, <laughs> no. Well, no, I got a carpet shampoo. Right well, I know. <laughs> I was building a motorcycle in the house one time. I fucking opened it up, fucked up. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Got oil went through the carpet, but a quart of it. But it was brand new oil. Yeah, brand new oil. It was clean oil. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was fucking. Crazy. I was like, see, that's what happens. When so you, I want to build a motorcycle. You had a air condition. You had a garage. Well, yeah, but yeah, it was hot outside. Yeah, it was hot like, outside. So yeah. I'm not gonna build it out in the garage. Fuck that. You build it right gonna, here in the house. I'm gonna have a heat stroke. I'm gonna see if it's the air <laughs> So this is probably yeah. yeah. That's probably why. Yeah. But yeah, so he's uh, so he's watching TV and doing this stuff. So um, so he's doing that, and then he feels that 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 little tingle, that weird sensation that he feels that he's like, yeah. oh, I know that the Greys are like up to some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's like, but he's gonna pretend like that he's that he doesn't see them or that he doesn't notice because he wants to see what's gonna happen, right? So he's kind of like waiting 
like kind of looking just low key you know what i mean and just waiting for them to like start peeking around the walls and stuff because remember yeah. i said they were doing that they would like do that it is house. peeking they're peeking yeah <laughs> fucking peeking Peek, ass peeking peekin ass aliens yeah <laughs> that's what they do Pookie does that too. Yeah, I've seen her fucking fucking around the corner. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> she peeks around the side of the wall or she peeks around the bedroom door. What are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, okay, never yeah. mind. <laughs> and then she's like, runs back into the hall. Have a sex, she'll creep up on you. <laughs> she what does. Watch it. What you watching? What you watching? She's like, yeah. Animals know what's up. They do. But yeah, it's funny. But yeah, Pookie peeks like that too. Well, that's what that's what I yeah. was making me laugh about thinking about all these little aliens like peeking yeah. around like from behind the couch and whatnot. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, like the kitty does that. Um. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, right. So he's waiting for them to to kind of pop out. So then he sees one like in the on the sun porch or whatever, just like in his peripheral vision, and he's just like pretending he doesn't see it. So he very calmly is like, la, 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 not seeing the alien, do to do. And he goes into the bedroom and gets the samurai sword and then kind of like stashes it behind the door, right? And then he goes back to the TV and he's just like pretending to watch TV again, like la, 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 don't see the aliens, that kind of thing. So then he sees two more little aliens like pop up next to the first one. So then he gets up again, goes acting cash. And then he goes in the room and gets his samurai sword and then comes out behind and he sees the three little aliens like standing there and the screen door is open and everything like that because they were born in a barn, clearly. So at this point, like he just takes a deep breath and he charges at him, right, with the samurai sword and swings it at him. Yeah. And he cut one of the aliens' heads off. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's trying to be a man. As you do. Trying to be a man. But yeah. Cut that alien. See, he off. fucked yeah, up the alien. Fucking extra. So the other you see- fucking extraterrestrial. <laughs> Did you come over here, you extra testicle? Fucking come over here. It was, yeah, it was that kind of Extra testicle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now he says. You have an alien species show up. <laughs> so you attack it with a samurai sword. Well, they're sword. assholes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. they've been fucking right, with this yeah. poor guy for like many years at this point. They're like doing all kind of shit to him. I'm not buying into this fucking story. You don't try to trap it and catch it because if you can catch one, you can sell him and work, make all kinds of money off of it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like that's probably what. Yeah, I, I wouldn't try to kill anything. El like, Padrino oh. said, "Nah, come on, play it." <laughs> Who said that? El Padrino. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's fucking bullshit. Yeah, I cut off the alien's head. Yeah, no. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Come on. No, just capture it. It's worth fucking billions. Yeah, I wonder, could he like, have like a bear trap or something? Because yeah. he said he used to see them all around yeah. the around the ranch all the time. So it's like, you know, why don't you put some like little alien chow or whatever whatever it is that they what was like a lure, you know what I mean? Alien chow. <laughs> I don't know where you'd get that. Imagine if you'd, you captured an alien. All right. And it's the real thing. You could probably hold that for ransom. You know what I mean? If I can get all kinds of money off of it. Well, yeah. Especially if you showed photographs or video of it. And so look, I got an extraterrestrial, bro. Got it hidden. Yeah, I got him chained up in my basement. Yeah. Fucking, um, you tell the CIA this shit. They're, that's it. You know, give me the money and I'll take you to him. And I won't you know? tell nobody. Yeah, but I want immunity and everything. Yeah, man, just yeah, I mean, you could me you could leverage the shit out of that. Because if you go back and look at the, if you go and go and look at the laws, all the things about kidnapping and murder and all, it's about if it's a human, that only applies if it's a human being. It doesn't apply for to animals, and it wouldn't apply to extraterrestrials. So they couldn't criminally prosecute you for capturing an alien. You could make all kinds of money. Yeah, you'd think. Unless they've added new laws that say, no, you can't capture You can't do that to an alien And you either. can't do the shit to Sasquatch and all kinds of <laughs> they got some ghosts ba- or whatever. Yeah, your ghosts. They got some backwards-ass <laughs> states like, uh, no, you can't kill Sasquatch. That's, you know. I think that, that might be, that law might be on the books in a few states. In a few states, yeah. You can't kill I, Sasquatch. I think it might be. There is no well, fucking Sasquatch. They're like, just in case, though. Yeah, right, They don't right. know. Just in case. I mean, the situation might arise and we don't want to have to write a new law. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. get it. Uh, El Padrino said, Mr. Tom, since you have yes. been to Brazil, have yeah. you heard of the 1980s alien capture? 1980s alien capture? Yeah. No. I've never heard of that no. either. There was uh, a pretty famous Brazilian case 
where some people out in the country kept getting attacked by balls of light and making burns in them and uh, some shit happened there, but I don't know anything about it. And the army was involved, but I don't know if it's real or not. You know, I wasn't there. And I'd have to research it more and find out what the deal was. It, Brazil would be an easy place to hoax stuff. You know? Yeah. James Knapp said, can't remember if it's Oregon or Washington, but one of them has a law that it's illegal to kill a big, Bigfoot. Yeah, I thought it yeah. was one of those two places. I mean, that's that's what I was thinking of when I said that. So, uh, so yeah. So he cuts off the alien's head, like you do. So yeah. he says that the other two, whose heads he didn't cut off, like disappeared immediately, which the, which they had been doing like every time he shot at them and whatnot. Think of how ridiculous this is. He cut well, off yeah. a, a, an extraterrestrial's <laughs> head with a samurai sword. Yeah. Where's the head? We'll see now. Okay, I'm gonna get Where's into that. Where's the head? I'm gonna get into that. Okay. So he said. So the dead one like was left there. Now he was kind of excited about this because he's like, look, um, I've been like shooting at these fuckers and throwing things at them and stuff like that, and usually they just disappear. Yeah. But now that I've cut its head off, yeah. like it actually stayed here. Okay. All right. So he apparently, allegedly, he wraps the the body up in plastic right mm -hmm. and put it in the freezer like okay. like you would do yeah now he's like okay well now i, I can prove it because i've got the dead yeah. body so he decides he's gonna send like tissue and blood samples to like a lab for scientific testing so he comes into uh, contact with a scientist and this is actually a real guy i did look him up um a scientist named wc levengood okay so um, he's like a research physicist or something like that. He's dead now, but, um, but yeah. So he sent the samples of the tissue like to the lab and gave Levengood like some other so, like, uh, samples as well. Now, according to all the stories, Levengood said that the tissue and the blood samples had uh, very weird properties that he had never seen before and that didn't match any plant or animal. Now, I saw one thing that said reportedly the blood was 100% hemoglobin. Not sure if that's true or not, but that's what one of them said. I don't know if that's the case. Um, and also, like, uh, they said that the, le that the results that they got seem to match like some other DNA or some other blood samples and stuff that they'd gotten from other like cattle mutilation sites like around the Southwest. Like I said, I don't know if that's true or not because it's not like you can really find a lot of like scientific papers about this. It's usually just other like paranormal sites like just repeating the same repeating story. It, right. So it's like, so yeah, I'm just like, I'm just saying. So, um, uh, a bunch of claims being parodied right, by right, right. other paranormal invest right, investigators. Right, right. So, so that's what I mean. So I'm always, like, really, really skeptical. And, like, you try to, like, look up the real people, and it's, like, really hard to find anything about it. Yeah, which sounds fishy. Because, it? like I said, I, now, W.C. Levengood is a real You're not guy. You're calling in Neil deGrasse Tyson and shit, see? Right. Right. Well, I will say, though, Levengood is a real, was a real guy. Yeah. He was a research physicist. And he had published a handful of papers that supposedly showed that plants from his big thing was crop circles. Okay. Um, and that plants from crop circles and to a lesser extent from cattle mutilation sites have um, displayed like unique anatomical anatomical characteristics. But I will note that critics of his work, um, you know, it's, I, as far as I know, his papers were behind a paywall, but he has written like three or four of them. Um, but as far as I know, the studies were conducted. Uh, they were not double blind. Uh, meaning that introduces the possibility of bias, obviously, because Levengood is not shy, uh, was not shy about his belief that crop circles are real and are caused by extraterrestrials, you know what I mean? So it could just be that he really believed that, so he was just kind of like, the data was kind of going in that way. So Levengood actually... Crop circles are not real. No, they're not. They're no. they're they're People actually quite them. easy to make they're them. easy to make they're yeah. quite easy to make them yeah. and you don't you only need a couple people aboard a yeah. rope and it's like you don't even need that long they there's videos all over yep. the place of people of making them, them making those and they're just they're not they're, super they're very cool but they're art they're not they're not they're not yeah extraterrestrial. no not not at all but um but yeah so levin good he was a real guy uh he was a research physicist as i said uh, he worked at a place called the Science and Technology, the Institute of Science and Technology in the Department of Natural Resources at the University of Michigan. He worked there from for like nine years, from 1961 through 1970. And then he worked uh, at a place called, uh, he was the director of biophysical research 
uh, in the private sector. Now, one thing that I did see come up a lot was that there were some, see, this is what I mean, where, where a lot of this stuff gets repeated across paranormal sites, but then when you check into it, it's not true. Um, one of the stories that went around about Levengood was that he died in a lab explosion or that his lab burned down and that like all the evidence that he was keeping there was gone. That apparently does not seem to be the case. He did die in 2013. I found his obituary. Um, it doesn't mention that he died like that. It does mention that he was 88 years old. Mm. And there was a post underneath, like, one announcement of his death that said that was a friend of his and said that he just died in a hospice. 88 in, is... In so Jackson, Michigan. Like, it wasn't a lab explosion or nothing 88 like that. is a full life. I mean, it's, it's your time. Yeah, so... That's what I'm saying. So I don't think there was anything weird. I don't think there was anything particularly weird about the lab. I mean, unless it's all been covered up or something. But I couldn't find anything like that. And from what I could determine, like, his death was... Looked normal. Like, he just died at a hospice when he was 88. So I don't know about like all the lab or anything like that. Um, so uh, so at this point, so I don't know. It's, you know, the, the samples, it's like, yeah, they're unusual, but there didn't really seem to be anything. And like I said, if you've got a whole alien head. Yeah, where's the head? That's what I'm saying. It's like I thought he had a whole head. And, 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 you know, and he just left the body behind? I'm just, I'm just taking Well, no, he had the head and the body, yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. he wrapped him in plastic. But, like, yeah, I mean, if you had an alien head, you'd think he would take the whole head, not just, like, <laughs> tissue samples. It's like, hey, I've got a whole fucking head. If you had the whole head and the whole body, you'd be a billionaire. That's what I'm saying. Because you now have the find of the century. You can prove it. You yeah. Know, and that you have custody of it. No, I don't believe in this shit, man. What are you talking about? Yes. Yeah, everybody would be all over that. Yeah, you think. And they'd cut you a check to fucking surrender that thing and they keep your mouth shut. So what would happen? Yeah, that's why I'm suspicious. You're right. I mean, I'm suspicious because his story was that he... And um, he also, like, later on, after all of this stuff happened, he also went to one of those hypnotherapists, you know, that, that alien abductees go to often, that... I hate to say, but they do kind of like plant memories in people's head because that's really not that hard to do. So, uh, so he went to one of those, and through these sessions, uh, he learned, or you know, or or it was put in his head that he had been abducted by the Greys eighteen separate times, and that he had no conscious memory of this. Um, but those, but you know, he, he'd been waking up and having all these wounds and stuff. And those were the times that he'd been abducted and his wife had also been abducted, yada, yada. Um, and like I said, they, they hinted around that maybe there'd been like some sexual abuse going on with aliens too, but they didn't really want to talk about that. Cause you know, aliens come here just to get laid. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah. Like I said, we'll just, they come here to stick stuff up humans, humans butts. Are, yeah. And yeah. you look at the people and you're like, man, what, what, what would they want with you, man? You're fucking, <laughs> you're fucking ugly, man. What the fuck Well, maybe they have different you? beauty standards yeah. on whatever planet they come from. Yeah. You know, you don't know. You're just, you're, you're being very, very human centric. Human centric. Right. Yeah. Like aliens might have a totally different set of like, you gotta be a middle aged ugly motherfucker Got to be a middle-aged, ugly motherfucker to get fucking butt horked by the alien. That's what I mean. They like they like like um, big old chubby, uh, you know, fucking balding dudes. Yeah, Jethro from Jet. Yeah, from Kansas or whatever. yeah, non flexible motherfucker. Can't, <laughs> can't even put the ankles behind the ears. <laughs> And that's what they're interested in. I ain't buying it. I'm El not Patri buying it. El Padrino said, 18 times you've been vi violated by an alien. Your booty must be the Ark of the Universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Coming of... across fucking galaxy to come get some of that ass off you. I mean, I that, that does make you feel special, I guess. It's like, man. <laughs> the aliens came all man. this way just to stick a vacuum cleaner in my butt. How dare you? <laughs> No, fucking, I just... They would, now, they might come all that way for Christopher Walken. Yeah, for Walken, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So much stuff in Christopher yeah, Walken's ass. I mean, you know what I mean? Vacuum I'm cleaners, dead. watches. Oh, oh my He's in my ass five years. Yeah, yeah. He oh, should have... Oh, my God. How funny would it have been <laughs> if... if um. Quentin Tarantino had told yeah. Christopher Walken, it's like, yeah. oh, can we tie this in with communion? Tell yeah. them that the aliens use yeah. the vacuum cleaner to put the watch in your butt. Yeah, right, yeah. It's like, that would have been hysterical. <laughs> because it's like that, well, not that many people would get that reference. So it's like, What's now, now funny, I kind of want to mash up It's that. funny how... <laughs> 
anybody just joining us and they don't they're not new to this show or they're new to this show <laughs> we're not making fun of these ufo cases because it's ufo case there are some good ones i'm like yeah it, i think that shit was extraterrestrial all right it's just some of this stuff is just fucking terrible you know what i mean I mean, like and, I said, you can this see, is a little outlandish. And you can a see little. the American cultural fingerprint in it on a lot of these cases. And it's always a fingerprint of the time. Okay. Yeah. Back in the 50s, it was, you know, fucking old Elmer in his fucking coveralls saying that he, motherfuckers, 300 pounds, all right going oh yeah the aliens came down and it was a beautiful alien woman and her and i had a child together you know like, man get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> women here don't want you okay and they're gonna come across fucking they're gonna come across the fucking you know solar systems to fucking come get some of elmer's fucking <laughs> special seed no it's not gonna happen bro it's not gonna happen but that's just in, yeah, in every decade, you can see how it's very much a, uh, an artifact of its time. Aliens would be unrecognizable to a human being, if you ask me, I, I think. I think really what, what you have correct, the, I think the closest thing to probably what, what will be reality is what you saw in 2001. The monolith shows up, and you can't understand it. You know what I mean? Alien technology would be incomprehensible to you. In the same way that a fucking monkey can never really understand what a jet in, what a jet fighter is, you know what I mean? Uh, a monkey might see a jet fighter, but it would never really understand what that was, or how to make that, or how to sh or how to fly that, or what it was actually for. And then the industries you need to make that, it would be like that. It would see, be like magic to us. It would just be like the monolith out of two thousand one. Well, you're not really sure, is that the alien? Is that its technology? What is it? You know, it's, it did this thing. It, it could create fucking stars. Well, fuck, you know, how does this work? It's like magic. And that's really what it is. It is makes it, sense to the aliens. It makes sense that. to the aliens because their technology is so advanced. It's beyond your ability to comprehend because you're just a bug compared to them. And from your point of view, it, it is magic. You know, not from their point of view, but from your point of view. You just don't have, your brain isn't, is can't compute it, you know. That's what it would be. You're talking about a superior species, but humans are arrogant. They think that, the, oh man, nothing's going to be smarter than me. These things are so smart. You're an inferior little bug compared to them. Or a monkey. That's, if don't, it can get here, monkeys. if it could get here across <laughs> the fucking vastness of fucking space okay it's superior to you it's intelligence is fucking fantastic you know you're nothing compared to it and it's not interested in you probably see that's why anytime like i i'm not averse to it's like oh you know they saw like lights in the sky and they thought that was yeah. a ufo like that's not that weird but the second you start talking about oh they abducted me and stuck things in my butt and like did this and that and the other yeah. thing i'm just kind of like I just kind of feel like that's maybe your fetish or you just had a nightmare or something like that. Because why the fuck would an alien do that? Think about this. Let's be rational. You're driving your car down the fucking freeway trying to get to the club. And you pass a stork on the side of the road. Are you going to stop and fucking contact the stork and try to tell the stork, hey, I'm a person. I'm going to the club. I'm here to make first contact with your people. No. <laughs> you just fucking keep driving, all right? And that's probably what... The aliens just see you and go, yeah, one of those. Those are everywhere. You know, there's lots of those. Things on planets, yeah, fuck them. We got shit we got to do. Hey, get out of the road, little guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we do, like we do with a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> you would just be another life form on planets, and they see that all the time, and they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care about you until you're like them, which that's millions of years away from us in terms of evolution. Probably machine intelligence, not even biological. Because biological life like us has a lot of limitations. You get old and you die. So you don't live long. Yeah, that sucks. If you were a machine intelligence, you could be immortal. And constantly be upgrading your body. If you needed a body. You might exist inside a metaverse. I'm, I'm pushing for that. 
I can't wait till I can download my consciousness into like some other fucking into like avatars and stuff. If it actually works. I mean, you know, I'm just I saying. I would like I'm, a trial first. Well, yeah. To see if it actually works, and then go, okay, yeah, that's we'll the try old it out. body. If I'm it's fuck- if it's cool, then yeah, I would I would totally do that. Yeah, and I don't want to know who who's running that shit. What are the rules like in there? You know what I mean? How free are you? And like, yeah, okay, I'm seventy something. There's not, I don't have many years left on that body. Life in here is better than the life out there. So yeah, I'll, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna die in a couple years anyway. I'll just stay in here. But I'd have to have a trial first, you know, of what the what a metaverse would be like. Yeah, you try it out. And it would be at the end of life. You know, not the beginning. I don't believe that, you know, you want to do that when you're young. You want to be like a damn... Like a a chrysalis... Like like an egg turning into a worm, turning into a chrysalis, and into a butterfly. You know what I mean? Stages in your development. You'd be a, you're a person. You're biological. You start to get old. And instead of dying and vanishing, you can preserve yourself inside a metaverse and live in that for a few centuries, you know, and do stuff from the metaverse in the real world, you know. American Military 100 said, since you guys are pushing for more subscribers and patrons, I would recommend doing a show that's topical, i.e. the Idaho student murders. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing a show about that. I actually put it in the poll, like, to do a show about it, but it didn't win. Like, this actually won. But I don't know. Maybe we would come on, like, one time, because I was reading about it earlier today. What does it have to do with, uh, um, what does it have to do with uh, patrons? Well, meaning you're gonna get more like uh, views because a lot because that is a topic that's trending. You oh, know what is I mean? it? like okay. in true crime. I didn't know because it's, it's something that just happened. Okay, yeah. all right, I didn't know about that. Right, right, right. Yeah, we. I've always encouraged Jen to maybe we should do more current topics, but a lot of the current topics are kind of depressing or incomplete. Like there's a new case. If they catch a serial killer, we hit that right. We jump right on that. I probably should. Yeah. I kind yeah. of feel like, well, because I have so many th- things going on, it's like hard for me to keep track of stuff. Yeah. I have been trying to think about, um, you know, particularly since we do like true crime stuff and we do horror stuff. Yeah. I was like, maybe I should like try to keep up with stuff that's going on more. Like, I like doing the stuff that we do that's like old and not have to worry about it. But I do kind of feel like we might get more subscribers yeah. and stuff like that if we. Did you know, more, uh, if we current, did more, so. and we'd only have to do it like maybe once or twice a week or something like that. You when know something I mean? hits the big time, we just you got to jump on it to be topical. Yeah, and that doesn't happen that often, actually. Yeah, a couple times a year. I mean, I have been trying to keep up because I do my crime and memorial site, and it's yeah. like so I do try to keep up with particularly old cases that I wrote about before that have been solved because some of them have like they've identified some people or they've figured out who did stuff so I have been trying to keep on top of that but you know what I mean it's yeah. it's a lot to keep it's up with it's a good suggestion though it's good yeah suggestion. yeah and like I said I have been thinking about doing that yeah El Padrino said I can honestly see Robert Stack reporting on anal rape by an alien on an episode yeah. of Unsolved Mysteries I yeah. would laugh my ass off just by hearing his voice Stack hated those UFO uh, um, episodes on, on, on the fucking yeah, he was really he didn't like those. Well, he got he got into the show for yeah. doing the true crime stuff, yeah. like finding people that got murdered and like p- missing people and stuff like that. I kind of feel like whenever they wanted him to do the paranormal stuff, he was like, "Man, do I have to?" I think the there were a few of them. I think he thought there was something to him. I, th- um, I think he thought there was something to the Belgian wave because so many French gendarmeries saw it. Okay. And I think there was something to the Belgian wave. Uh, that, that was a good case. Did we do a show about that? No. I don't think we did. We need to do one about the Belgian wave. I could have sworn we did, but maybe, yeah. I mean, we've done so many shows. Yeah, I mean, we, let's do that I'll one. It, I'll write it down. You guys want one on the Belgian wave? The Belgian I mean, I'll put it in the... I'll put it in a A board. lot of cool shit happened during that one. That was over a period of about a year. Um, I mean, that sounds familiar, so I feel like yeah, we maybe did a show the about Bel- that The one. Belgian Air Force picked up stuff. The Belgian cops saw a bunch of stuff. Just strange triangular craft with little balls that come out and measure things and look at the water and then move on. And, and it was just, and then they left. But a lot of cops, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of Belgian cops saw it. And French cops and shit. All right, so let's let's get back to this because we don't have that much more to go on this okay. one. Then we can talk about some other stuff. Okay. But um, but yeah. So over the following several years John claimed to have killed 19 aliens I guess with the samurai sword 
Um, so at this point, I guess he, it, here's the thing. Like he said that he'd started, he stopped posting stuff online because the men in black came and like told him not to. Yeah. But I guess he started doing it again because in 2011, um, you know, the, the story had kind of gone, I don't know if I'd call it viral, but like people started hearing about it. So he started getting like calls and messages and stuff from other people that had had similar experiences or were psychics or whatever. Uh, he ended up getting a phone call from a woman named Brandy Howe, who is a doctor of divinity. Uh, she actually was on the ghost hunt, the ghost adventures uh, episode that they did about this. So she's on there. So she actually got hired to help him out by this other woman named Cynthia Crawford. Now, Cynthia Crawford, uh, listen to this shit. This is, this is a piece of work. Cause I looked her up too. Now, she had heard about what the weird shit that was going on at the ranch. Now, Cynthia, who I think is still around, she's an artist, but she her claims are that she was born a fraternal twin, but that she had a completely different blood type and tissue type than her twin sister. Oh, what? Um, How is that possible? Well, the, okay. wait, I'm getting into okay, it. Okay, okay. Um, she also said that her dad was kind of like a high muckety-muck in the OSS, which was pri the progenitor to the CIA. Yeah, long t World War II, though, long time ago. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, she's born. she was born in the 50s or something. Okay. So, um, her dad said that he was, uh, he knew about all these, like, secret technologies, alien treaties, all this kind of stuff. He was all in Project Paperclip. Which was the whole thing with the Nazis, you know, bringing with the Nazis. the Nazis in the World War II and stuff like that. Yeah, bring bringing Nazi scientists in, right, into the fold. Yeah. So, so remember when I said that she was born and like she had like a totally different blood type than her sister? She also claimed that she was born without an amniotic sac, and that when she was older, <laughs> her dad told her, yeah. That he had been approached by agents, OSS agents, to participate in a secret government project to make a human-alien hybrid, and that that's what she was. She um, had been grown in a petri dish, and then put in the in the womb. Uh, uh, no. Well, obviously, okay. but I'm just saying right. that's what her story is. Okay. So apparently she said that she'd been taken to like all these underground military medical facilities like when she was a kid and all this other kind of stuff. So she was so, saying back in the 50s she was a product of in vitro fertilization. And that she hybridization was hybridization of human, of human, of human and alien human, DNA. Yeah, yes. and that she was put into a damn woman. No, I'm already, no, 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 no. Yeah, well, I told you. No. I told you you're going to love this. Yeah, okay. All right. So, um, so yeah. So that was her story, and she's sticking to it. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> it, like I said, she's an artist, and uh, she talks a lot about kind of star beings and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> so, you know. So she uh, heard about... Star Trek, man. <laughs> where humans and Vulcans can crossbreed, and fucking they can crossbreed. No, man, fucking alien... An alien species, it, its genetic code, if even if it had DNA, it probably would have something like DNA. You just would not be able to crossbreed. You can't even crossbreed with other species of animals that are from the Earth. What makes you think you can crossbreed with a with a, with a, with an with an with an, <laughs> with an alien? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's like you not, can't go you can't go fuck a cow and have yeah, like a little cow man right. hybrid. The closest thing to a human that we being know of. <laughs> the closest thing to a human being is a chimpanzee, and you can't crossbreed with them. Yeah, you know, it's just not gonna happen. Didn't work out. Now, it could happen between a horse and a donkey. You'll get a mule, yeah. but it'll be sterile. Yeah. But, no. You're not going to be able to fucking... I mean, it really it, doesn't it. take that much distance between two species no. before they became... Yeah. And a lot of times they can produce offspring, but the offspring are sterile, like There's you said. Yeah. Like, and then that's kind of like along the way of just becoming two different Certain species. big cats can crossbreed. A lion and tiger, or, or a lion and a tiger can make a liger. Yeah. But then the liger's sterile. Yeah. So, you know, but you're talking about an intelligent being from another planet. You won't be able to crossbreed with that. No, fuck no. It'd have a totally different genome. Well, the evolution totally on that genome. planet would have been completely totally different. different than ours. It's, it's DNA may not even fucking have the same chemicals or proteins involved. You know what I mean? It's just, no. Well, yeah, because it might, like I said, it might be completely different from the ground up. From the ground up. Yeah. 
It's D it's DNA helix might not be based on four things. It might be based on six. Yeah. You know, you don't know. Well, aren't it, well, I think even fucking Star Trek went into that because of some yeah. of the like alien species were like silicone based instead of like carbon based and stuff like that, yeah, which, which is I, don't, I looked into that. I don't think it's possible. Well, no, but I mean, based, but... I'm just saying that I mean, yeah. that's a good like hypothetical because it doesn't life doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be the way it is here. There's carbon lots is, of different ways that it could have carbon evolved. and water are the way to go. Uh, pretty much. That, that's it. That's how you make a li- There might be very primitive life on some places like fucking Europa here, you know, the moon around Jupiter, you know, they might have some, it's very low temperature, but it would never become an advanced form of life. Europa might have something underneath the, underneath the ocean, but it wouldn't be more complicated than a fish, I don't think. Uh, but that'd be really stretching it. It does have liquid water though, so and it you know, but which uh, is yeah, that's, it does have liquid good. water. It could it could be all right, but I'm not sure there's enough energy there in terms of heat, you know. Then you go to a place like Titan, where it's fucking very cold, where you know fucking what is it? Gases are liquid there, you know. <laughs> and I don't know how uh, if there was anything in, on planets that cold, the metabolisms of those creatures would be so slow. They'd be happening at another time scale where they live for centuries, but they're tiny. They're tiny organisms, you know, fucking micro, you know, they're what do they call it? Microbiology. I don't think it'd be anything big. It's just too much Star Trek, you know what I mean? Fucking. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's like, you know, just from. Yeah. I don't like to burst anyone's bubble, but. Yeah. Chances are when you're dealing with extraterrestrial life forms. They're going to be coming from planets like Earth. They're probably going to... But they're going to be very different. Very different. DN, their DNA... They'll have something like DNA, but it will, it will be totally different. Because they, they've clawed their way up through a totally different process of selection and different ancestry. And Well, yeah. and the thing that people forget, too, is that um, you know the process of evolution on Earth is... A lot of it is um, based on just contingencies, which were based on just random luck. shit that You're luck, right. the sh- random shit that happened. Yeah. You know, look at what happened to the dinosaurs. That's kind of like the most obvious example with the fucking comet or whatever. But had that not happened, then like we would not be here because it took them out of the large predators, like out of the niche. I'm convinced that in the universe, in, the, in our galaxy, life is common. Most of it's I'm gonna, sure it probably Most is. of it's going to be microbes. You're going to see large creatures, though. And it's going to be mostly on planets that are kind of like Earth. Uh, you wouldn't be able to crossbreed them with them, though. And it's going to be mostly animals and plants, things like that. Or yeah, a mixture I mean, of the two. Yeah, like you mentioned, we can't even crossbreed with animal other animals on, on Earth. On this planet. Which are related to us, yeah. demonstrably. Right, so there's no way to be able to cross with them. Yeah. And um, other planets, they're going to be things like plants and things like animals and things that are kind of a cross between the two. Being a plant and an animal, there's gonna be a lot of aquatic-based type life forms, because you know there's gonna be a lot of water on Earth-like planets on other in other places. But technological civilization is gonna be very rare, real rare, for at any given time. There's probably a lot of them in the past, and there'll be a lot of them in the future. But time is another thing you got to look at. Uh, right now. There's probably not too in our galaxy. There are probably not too many technological civilizations, uh, and then the other ones that exist are probably centuries behind us, and other ones are maybe millions of years ahead of us. There's probably nothing in this galaxy that's the same as us or at the same level. They're either going to be ahead or behind. The chances of there being one just like us in this galaxy zero. Thank you, Mango. The mango's there. Kraken show and subject. Thank you. Android cold sends their love. Okay. okay. Tom Sykes says, John Edmonds has photos of the greys, but they look sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this whole story is pretty sketchy. He's making this up. <laughs> He's, well, he did. But, um, <laughs> he just died last year, I think. He made this up. But, um, but yeah, so who were we talking about? Okay, so Cynthia Crawford, she was the one that said that she was, uh, you know, a product of alien DNA. She was the one that hired this other woman, Brandy Howe. Now, Brandy Howe 
goes to, and like I said, Brandy Howe, as far as I know, was on the Ghost Adventures episode because I saw clips of that too and I saw like pictures of her. But she goes out to the ranch to help John Edmund out. Brandy says to John, um, well, she's like, I don't know what the fucking deal is, but it's, I guess most aliens are nice. But she's like, um, the aliens that you have are having a problem with are renegade aliens. Brandy says that she's been abducted lots of times since she was four years old and um, also has psychic powers because, of course, she does. Yeah. So she um, she says the Cynthia woman, the mm -hmm. alien hybrid woman, she hired Brandy to investigate the ranch. And Brandy said that she was told to bring two aliens from the Sirius constellation with her to investigate whatever was going on with this for whatever reason. So John and Brandy are talking for a bit. Um, so Brandy comes to this ranch, like to do the investigation. And she did indeed have two dudes with her. And she claimed that these two dudes were from Sirius. Um, and she called them both Jay. And I was like, all right. So in the Men in Black movie, the one with Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith in it. Weren't their names J and K? I kind of feel like, I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but somebody help me out here. I was like, so are we, all, are we getting ideas from the movies now? Because I just feel like everything in here is like from a movie. You know what I mean? So yeah. So both of these guys that she brought, who just apparently just looked like regular guys, but she said that they were aliens and that they were from, that they were from the Sirius uh, constellation or whatever, the star or whatever. And she called them both J. Maybe that was both their names. I mean, it's not that uncommon a name. I'm just saying. So um, she says that the reason that she brought these two guys with her, that is because the Syrians are like a warrior race of aliens. So I guess, I don't know, like the Klingons, but maybe not evil. I don't really know. And so they're basically like, if you have like some shit that needs to get done, like a problem that needs to get cleaned up or something, those are the motherfuckers you call. Like that's, those are the experts in that situation. You know what I mean? So, uh, so that's why she brought these two guys, the two G's. She brought them with her. <laughs> this story is just getting so fucking, it's just getting crazier. Every, I, I was reading the whole thing and I'm just like, you have got to be kidding me. Like the, okay. Sounds like some Whitley Strieber bullshit. That's yeah. what I mean. This is like, yeah. like I said, if you're, okay. If you're going to like write some paranormal stuff, um, and you're going to make it up and you want people to think it's a true story, like just to make some money or whatever. Um, I would advise you to kind of keep it low key. Just keep it low key. Don't go this crazy with it because like most, most people are not going to believe you. I think it's more believable if you keep it a little bit, not as outlandish as this. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. El Padrino said she's a Scientologist. Who? Whoever it is we're talking about. She said she's a Scientologist. Oh, I wonder if that's um. I don't know. She's talking about this brand, this Brandy woman. Maybe I don't that know. that makes sense. They're all yeah. into aliens and stuff. Yeah. So Brandy it's brings shit. Brandy brings the two guys from Sirius, uh, both of whom name is Jay. Uh, you know, because they're warrior aliens. Yeah. So she brings. Yeah. Because of, well, of course. So yeah, yeah well, duh, everybody yeah, knows that. Duh. So. <laughs> 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 so she brings him to the ranch to deal with these renegade aliens, this renegade alien issue these that's been going being on, renegade on a at, at yeah. Stardust Ranch, like yeah. fucking with the animals and whatnot. Right. So they just come there, and uh, apparently Brandy says she feels like a, a disturbance in the forest or whatever. There's kind of some kind of like por some portals or some shit. I think they said that that um, John had seen like portals around the place too. I think I neglected to mention that. Okay, but um. Yeah, I think I saw that someplace. All right. So she's like, oh, okay, well, there's portals over here, so that's why you're getting so many grays. It's kind of like a, a hangout place. Like, it's like a bus station. It's like the, it's like, it's like the Greyhound bus station, yeah. but with grays for aliens. See, mm. see how I did that? Mm. All right, so, uh, so Brandy and the two aliens, the good aliens, they do a cleansing prayer, which is, like I said, it's just like a haunting. They didn't, like, have any cool shit to do? I don't know. So they just do the same shit you do to, like, to get rid of ghosts, I guess. So they do it all around the property. And then um, Brandy tells John, oh, hey, I created another portal in your house. And some of the aliens want to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Um, because the portal that I created, like, yeah. allows the aliens to talk to you. Right. 
So they go in the house, and there's kind of like a, a hologram type thing that looks like a globe or some shit, like in the house. And you're going to love this. And so three things, like three aliens, come out the, the hologram. And they're carrying swords, and they have breastplates on, like medieval style. These are medieval aliens. It sounds like something out of damn Revelation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. maybe that's maybe that's why on Ghost Adventures they thought this was like some demonic shit going yeah, right, on. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, this does actually sound... Everything in this sounds like it came from someplace else. Yeah. Like a movie or a book or something. It's all rebooted. Yeah, they're just like, they just yeah got shit from everywhere. Um. So, apparently Brandy said she couldn't see them, but John could see them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, John's wife, Joyce, she said she saw, like, the globe thing and the weird light in the room. She didn't see the aliens either. John was the only one that saw the aliens. But everybody else said that they saw, like, the light or the globe or the hologram or whatever the fuck. So, um, apparently John and the aliens have some kind of conversation. I don't really know what they were talking about. And then Brandy uh, goes out on the property again and said that she went and telepathically talked to the animals about what was going on. And Brandy said that the aliens were allowed to kill the animals, but weren't allowed to kill the people because whoever was letting the aliens kill the animals said, oh, well, you can kill the animals and no one will do anything. But if you kill a human, then um, a superior would come and, like, punish you. Right? Yeah. So I guess. So they just kept fucking with the people, but they didn't kill them. All right. But they're just like, well, the aliens want you out of here because like this is their area because all the portals are here. So they've been trying to get rid of you and they're mad because you didn't leave. This is some ridiculous shit. Man. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm keep. I'm doing a good job. I'm keeping a straight face. Yeah, Look yeah, at this yeah. shit. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm if I do say so myself. Yeah. So she's out there, like, after she's done telepathically talking to the animals, which, like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna make too much fun of that, but you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I talk to the cat all the she time. She's telepathically talking to the poop. I t- I, that's what I mean. I talk, yeah, I yeah. talk to poop. I don't know if I'd say telepathically. You don't have to telepathically talk to poop. poop cause she just looks at you. You know exactly what she's thinking. Well, yeah. And well, that's what I mean. It's yeah. kind of like telepathically. Yeah. And a lot of times, sometimes I'll think and I'll think, yeah. just, I wonder where Pookie is. And, yeah. then she'll, and then she'll come and peek in the door like, what? Were you like, did you call me? Yeah. yeah. So she does that. Dive on her back and fucking, fucking put her feet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> El Padrino said, no, I meant she sounds like a Scientologist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to tell these days. So, uh, so, yeah. So they're doing all these blessings around the property and whatnot. Um, and she said that what she was doing was that she was trying to, like, make it so that it was harder for the for the aliens to, like, come through. So she's, like, I don't know, closing up the portals or blocking the portals or I don't know what. So um, so while they're all looking, like, out on the property, uh, they saw a bunch of alien spacecraft, like, appear in the sky, like, over the property. And they said one of them was, like, br- like a really, really big, like, as big as, like, several city blocks, they said. Um, and then John said that he saw, like, the mothership. It looked like just this whole big fucking city, like, floating in the sky. And then Brandy starts talking, like, starts saying this weird shit, like, in some weird unknown language, right? Um, and then she said that she, she later said that she was talking to the Greys, and she's like, you need to go with these ships and, like, get the fuck out of here, is basically what she was telling them. And she also said that uh, the ships had come there. I think she said that the ships had come there and that whoever was in the ships was, like, mad at the greys that were fucking around on the earth. And the reason that they came there and, like, like uncloaked or whatever was just kind of like, man, you motherfuckers better get back in this fucking ship because you're, you're, you know, fucking up. So (laughs) Brandy also said there are three ships with about 20 greys per ship living on this property. So 60 greys live on this property. Um, That's what she said. So then they do this little ritual where her and the two aliens that she brought with her, the Syrians, um, they kind of like did this weird thing with the swords and like touched the tips together and like purple lightning (laughs) went everywhere and all this other kind of stuff. This is like right right out of Revelations. That's what I mean. This is like, this is a story. So John's, like, watching all this go on, and he, yeah. then he's just kind of like, holy shit. 
Um, and apparently, like, the lightning struck the ground, and there was, like, you know, it was burned there and everything like that. So after that, the two Jays, who were from Sirius, they, like, went, they left. And then Brandy, like, goes to leave, and then she's like, I don't think the Grays will be a problem anymore, she says. Because she, she took care of that shit. And then she left. So, apparently, like, John and Brandy were, like, talking over the next few weeks. Brandy said she had some memory loss about it. One of the aliens that she had brought with her uh, apparently went crazy and was put in a mental institution. Um, and I think what they said later on was that the two guys that were supposedly from Sirius, they were what they call walk-ins, meaning not like a walk-in clinic, but like, um, I guess alien souls, like walk in your body and like kick your soul out like uh, willingly or something. I don't really know what the, I don't know how that works, but yeah. So that's apparently what those two guys were like. They were humans, but aliens had come down and be like, Hey, you using this body? Thanks. <laughs> it was like, I'm going to, I'm going to use this. So there was that. So apparently uh, John claimed that after this whole incident that he was pretty much in contact with nice aliens uh, for pretty much every day. Like he, he talked to the aliens all the time um, for just years, ever since he, you know, talked to the, to the Syrians, the Jays. So he said that he asked them like a whole bunch of questions about like life and philosophy and the universe and all that other kind of stuff. But he'd only ever give them like they'd only ever give him like really uh, cryptic sort of uh, answers. So, of course. Now, 2000, it was around 2016 or 2017. I feel like that's when kind of this story went kind of wider because he was trying to sell the ranch around this time. And I believe, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he was trying to sell it for $5 million, which I don't really know how, because I mean, it's 10 acres and the house is nice, but I don't really know if it's worth $5 million. So I don't really know if this is a story he came up with just to like sell it for $5 million or I'm not really sure. But so he was trying to sell it. But, um, apparently it didn't sell. So I guess they left it on the market for several years and, you know, they never sold it. And I don't know, like, if they went bankrupt or something like that. But, um, John Edmonds did die, like, in February of 2022. Like, I think Joyce is still alive, but I'm not entirely sure if she still lives there. Um, and I'm not sure if they're in some, if she's in some kind of financial trouble. Cause I don't really know because I kind of, I was listening to one podcast that said, oh, well, he probably just made up the whole story, like to sell the shit for $5 million, but I don't know if it ever sold. Cause I saw some other stuff that said, oh yeah, they did sell it for $5 million, but I saw another one that said it never sold. You know what I mean? And that she still lived there. So I don't really know. So, um, Apparently, I've heard, too, that it was in foreclosure. So I don't know if they're going to do, like, a bank auction or something like that. So I don't really know. I, I don't really know what the what the truth of the matter is, you know. So I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know if this was all. It sounds like a hoax. I mean, this sounds like the craziest, one of the craziest fucking things. One of the craziest fucking things that I've ever heard. And I'm really proud of myself for keeping a fucking straight face like through that pretty much that <laughs> whole story because when I was reading it, um, I mean, even from the beginning, like with the stuff about, I mean, it was creepy, like the shit about the pool and everything, like the furniture in the pool and all that other kind of stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, that's pretty creepy. But it's like, as, as it went on, I was just kind of like, oh, this is what, okay, we're going here now. And it's like, no, now there's men in black and oh, now there's the Sasquatch and now there's this and that and the other thing. And I'm just kind of, El Padrino said Bob Lazar bought it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Le look, man. <laughs> At least Lazar had some plausible deniability in a certain way where, uh, maybe I don't know if that's a good term, but Bob Lazar never gave you enough to where you could disprove what he's saying. Over time, yeah, you got, you're a bullshitter. But fucking in the beginning, you, you could actually pre-internet you could kind of buy that maybe Lazar knew something. Uh, I still like Lazar though. He he, but he's yeah. an act. He's we a, did a show about him too. Yeah, he's, he, he's a good act. I kind of feel like yeah, yeah, and especially nowadays when it's so easy to check on stuff. Yeah, I kind of feel like if you're gonna, if you're gonna make up something like this, 
like you said, keep the details kind Very of vague, vague. Right. So that people can't check on stuff. And like I said, my my advice would be don't um don't make it this outlandish. Because you know what I mean? Now some people are gonna believe it, sure, but it's like like cynical motherfuckers like me, man. I'm just like I I, I seriously I don't know if there's like a single detail about this that I could totally buy. I just don't. I, the <laughs> no, only no, no, the no, only no. thing I could believe I could believe that you moved into the house and some motherfucker like didn't move their furniture. I believe that <laughs> that could happen. But it's like after that I'm just like mm, no no I don't believe any of that stuff. Nope. <laughs> Oracle says if the details are vague sometimes people will fill the story gaps for you. Exactly exactly. Ideally that's what you want to happen. You want people to take your story and kind of like run with it and come up yeah. with theories with with you just being like real kind of cagey about it. it's like well I don't know man it's like you know there could have been this could have been this. don't be too specific because yeah. people can check that shit. Well looking back on it in the 90s when a lot of this shit came out when a lot of this new UFO stuff was coming out back in the Back in the fucking, um, uh, back in the mo- ba- back in the days of the alien autopsy and all that, it wasn't what they were saying. It, what they were saying was pretty. In, in each case, it was actually very vague. Uh, what what I was actually getting fucking. When I look back on it, it, was my imagination filling in the damn gaps. You know, my imagination run wild with me about. You know, well, if they said this, does this mean this? And they, you know, they, they were just they were just good at less is better when it comes to these kind of cases. The more you know, the less you believe. What was the name of that fucking? Um, what was the name of that television series that was out at that time? The X Files. The UFO fucking the UFO fucking. Craze was fucking high during the during the nineties when the X Files was out, and um, there was just something about it where they weren't giving you enough. They weren't really giving you very much information. So, you, like you said, you fill you fill your imagination filled in the blanks, and it was your imagination that was really doing all the work, you know. And that's really why Art Bell was fucking great. Art Bell was doing the same thing. He would have, you know, you'd, you'd fucking tune in to, to his fucking radio station, radio his radio program. It was hard. It was hard to access it everywhere in the, in the depending on where you were, in, you know, in the United States at the time. So it was kind of like it was, uh, it was like underground, kind of special. And then you'd hear fucking art, and the less art gave you, the the fucking more impressive that it was. What you doing, Jeff? Please don't leave that door open. What door? That closet door. Oh, it was open? You left it open when you got the See, so I'm getting yelled at for leaving the closet door open. Well, because Pookie... She's afraid Pookie's going to go in there and hang herself. She did one time. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. That's why I don't open it anymore, because she goes in there and climbs and stuff. Why don't you play some commercials or something, Jim? Go well, it's almost... Okay. Okay. Do what you want. Well, see if you find where Pookie is. I didn't see her in the closet, but... She likes to go in that closet, and I don't like her to go in there, because... One time, she went in there, and um, she... Got she was trying to like jump through something and she got caught like on a um I don't know what it was like a bra strap or a coat hanger or something like that and she was like hanging like that and I had to you know I heard her so I found her but she likes to go in there and I don't like her to go in there so Tom was going in there and getting the wig and he just left it open so it's been open for like a really long time hopefully she's not in there yeah <laughs> I didn't see her in there but. She just wants to go in there all the time. I keep trying to tell her. It's like, you don't need to go in there. I mean, I'll let her go in there if I watch her, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to let her just go in there. So I don't know. I didn't see her in there. Maybe she went somewhere else. I don't know where she went. But yeah. Um, Hell Padrini said, you guys should do a video live at the gates of Area 51. Yeah, we've been talking about... um, I don't know, like, eventually when we have some money or something like that, I would actually like to do a few shows, like, in the field. Like, I'd actually like to go. We'd have to probably start, um, you know, close by. Because I was like, I wouldn't mind doing a show from, like, St. Augustine or something like that. Because there's a lot of really cool shit there. And it's, like, you know, really cool visually. And that's not that far from here. It's only, like, an hour drive. So, you know. Or maybe we could do, like, Casadega. There's all kind of, like, haunted shit around Florida. We could do that. But... 
I don't know. We'll have to see. One of the things that we're thinking about doing this year, if we have money, is doing shit from the field. Did you see her anywhere? No, I didn't see her. Hmm. I don't I, think she's in the closet. I just, like, I dug around in there and I didn't see are her. Are you anymore. hungry? Yeah. I'm starving. I'll make you something to eat. All right. Well, I guess we're almost at three hours, yeah. so might as well. Okay. Might as well close it down, I guess. But I was, say, I was saying that one of the things we were thinking about doing this year, if we had the money, was doing shows from locations. You know? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all I want to say. That's all I can like say about it. I was just like, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So I guess we're going to wrap it up for this evening. So we'll be back Friday night for the Sidetracks show. So thanks, everybody, for dropping. This was actually a fun show because the topic was so was so out there. So, you know, those are usually fun to do. So, uh, so yeah. So we'll see you guys again Friday night. Thanks for dropping by and hanging out with us. Thanks for your super chats. And we'll see you guys on Friday. Good night.